Here. Uh, yeah. Craig Dillon? Yes. Uh, council, that motion passes unanimous 24 0 against. Thank you, Council. Um, so, so now that we're going to have um, uh, the approval agenda, so I know that there's a few items that we had to uh, to do. Um, so, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve, um, Councilman Carlo. Okay. Ms. Ms. Chairman, yes. we, we do have a resolute uh, ordinance that we need to address today. And I was wondering if we could do this or not. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's, what's the... No. It's the ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe amending ordinance number 20-18 as amended by ordinance number 20-29 and 20-34 by incorporating the OST COVID-19 risk level chart to determine when the shelter in place shall be in effect. And it will address that because of our level is yellow. Okay. Motion Thank to put it on, sir. Okay. Motion Motion to uh, for that risk level chart. Is there a second? A second by Councilman Hopkins. Any discussion on that, Council? This is just that two thirds it on, I believe. So. Uh, and this is an emergency. This is related to COVID. So this is why we're, we're putting this on. So, um, uh, Secretary, you follow up? Thank you. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Who? Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jump. Can you go, Sr.? Yes. Gerald Kenoria Jr. Yes. Dr. Hawkins Sr. Yep. Lyndall Youngman Jr. Yes. Ron DeBray. Yes. James Cross. Yes. John Carlo. George Zimmer Jr. Yes. Julian Spotted Bear? Yes. David Puyer? No. Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Ah. Uh. Nikki Steers? Here. Yeah. Michael Carlos Sr.? Yes. Bernardo Rodriguez Jr.? Yes. Garfield Still? Yep. Yes. Uh, council, that motion passes. Yes, uh, three no. Uh, motion passes. Thank you, Council. Um, Councilman. Uh, uh, Councilman. Weapons? Did you, uh, did you have a motion or no? No. no you agree? Okay. 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 <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Uh, if you want to make a motion to approve the agenda, that that'd be good. So, motion to approve the agenda. Okay. Motion to approve. Okay. Motion to approve. Second by Councilman Carlo. Um, any discussion on that? Hearing none. Um, Secretary, if you could call the vote. Thank you. Wesley Hawkins Sr. Oh. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle Sr. Yes. Gerald Canaria Jr. Yes. Austin Hawkins Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yep. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. Ron DeBray. Oh. James Cross. Yes. Ella Giancarlo? Yes. George Jimmer Jr.? Yes. Jillian Spotted Bear? Yes. David Tuyer? Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Uh -huh. Jackie Sears? Uh huh. Michael Carlos Sr.? Yes. Bernardo Rodriguez Jr.? Yes. Garfield Steele? No. Craig Gillen? Yes.
uh, council that passes 24 zero again. So uh, the, the agenda is approved. Councilwoman Whitehorse. Um, Stacy, do you think you could email us the, or give us a copy of the risk level chart that was approved by the task force? Uh, the vice president's going to send it out to you. So, okay. Thank you. And she's going to send it to the whole council. So you'll get that in your email. So thank you. Um, so council, so we're on, uh, item number six, I believe, and then we'll have one more item number seven. So we'll go to eight, the last item. Um, so council at this time, um, so I, I think the, the biggest thing is that I'm going to turn the, this, this process, this part over to our ALJ and, um, and she's going to kind of go over the ground rules, but this, you know, I ask that you keep this process respectful as possible. I know it's an emotional thing. Um, and it, you know, there could be emotions involved. So this please try to keep the questions. And if you ask questions, please direct them to the, to the chair or the, the, the presiding ALJ. So if let's say, for example, uh, Councilman Yellowboy has a question and uh, this directed to the, the, uh, the ALJ, Ms. Stalling, and she'll ask that question for you because that way it keeps the orderly process and stuff like that. So this, this please uh, ask your questions through that. And then I'll, I'll be standing out to the side um, and uh, she's gonna turn over this process and, and that's how we'll kind of proceed. So is there any questions at this time, Council? Okay, hearing none. Um, so I'll turn the meeting over to Ms. Stalling, uh, Stalling and um, she could uh, go from there. Thank you. Thank you, President. Good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I am here today serving as a hearing officer in this matter. We are proceeding under the Comprehensive Code of Ethics and Removal Procedures, Section 8, as it's my understanding that a complaint has been filed against Councilman Steele and the council elected to bypass the ALJ and proceed forward directly to a hearing by the council. <clears throat> Under the Comprehensive Code of Ethics and Removal Procedures, the Tribal Council is the sole judge here. Their, your decision is not reviewable or appealable to anyone else. <clears throat> Under the code, you, um, your job today is um, to listen to the evidence. Both sides will be given an opportunity to present their evidence, to cross-examine witnesses, and make arguments to the council. The council has the ability under the code um, to dismiss the complaint by a majority vote for reasons outlined in 6-2B of the code. You can also sanction Councilman Steele by a two-thirds vote. And sanctions include a public reprimand, suspension, removal, or any other sanction that the council sees fit. <clears throat> so um, we will proceed forward. I will allow, um, I have had a request that witnesses be sequestered, meaning that witnesses are not allowed to sit in here. And so as long as both sides agree to have the witnesses sequestered, I'm going to order that witnesses be sequestered. So anyone that is here currently as a witness and listed on the witness list, you need to go out in the hall. So that would be uh, Tashia Big Crow, Sylvester Thomas, Jess Port there, Delbert Brewer, Crystal Badwoon, Gracie Polymer, Naka Changing Crow, or Charging Crow, I'm sorry, Miracle Spotted Bear, and Helen Gady. Gaddy, I apologize. Yes, Councilman. I also added uh, Collins Clifford okay. the third, and Lisa looks twice as a witness. Okay, and 
so are they all okay yes councilman thank you judge i have two questions um one <clears throat> excuse me there is an elder who would like to speak on behalf of one of the um complainants mm -hmm. are they going to be allowed if they're not on a witness list um they there's no um if we have time we'll allow them i'm not going to let this turn into um any sort of just um a character assassination or anything like that we're here based on a complaint and we're going to try to stick as best as we can to that complaint so if they have additional um evidence to offer we will hear them if it's just going to be a continuation of evidence that we've already heard i don't think that they will be necessary okay thank you and then also at what point would you recommend that i recuse myself as i'm related to one of the um one of the uh persons who presented a complaint you should recuse yours or you may recuse yourself during the vote you are, if you want to be here for the hearing, that's fine. Um, but you are also bound by these code um, of ethics. And I think you understand that. And so I would, you know, you can observe these. Um, I don't know if you will have questions, but I think it would probably be best to not to ask questions if you're going to recuse yourself from the vote. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes, Councilman. I have a question. Since these are separate um, complaints, um, should it be two separate hearings? Um, it's my understanding that these complaints stem basically from the same incident. So I would prefer to just proceed forward. We'll allow Miss um, Whiteface to go first and present her evidence. And then I would like uh, Miss Spotted Bear to go second, and then you can present your um, case. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Miss Whiteface, you may go first. Um, real quick, in regards to um, Mrs. Whiteface's statement, um, I believe Miss Spotted Bear would be a. Um, I, I, I don't. I think she would be more or, or less of a witness in regards to her complaint. So, as Miss um, Whiteface gives her statement, I think it's best that. Um, Miss Spotted Bear be treated as a witness and be, you know, with the other um, um, individuals that will come in and give um, their testimony. She is not currently listed as a witness, and I consider her as a party to this hearing. So all parties are permitted to stay. Okay. And I'm sorry, what is your name? Okay. Garfield posted on Facebook about the hearing today. Garfield um, posted on Facebook about the hearing today. And we have one of our security here in support of him. And if he's here in support, why is he here in his duty uniform? I, is that allowable? Because it says it clearly, I will. I definitely will be there. Okay. Uh, I don't believe security is voting, and he. But I mean, if he's here in support of him, can why can't we have our supporters in here with us? We are sequestering the witnesses. He is not a witness. He has not been listed. To my knowledge, he's not a witness. Correct? No. Okay. Okay. Well, I just wanted to get that out there because. Thank you. I appreciate that, you, you know, letting me know. Okay. Miss Whiteface. Real quick, real quick, one other thing. Um, could we request that um, nobody be on the cell phones? Because, you know, it's easy to text individuals that may or may not be in a room. 
these matters under the code it's confidential you all are bound by a code of confidentiality i can't police whether you're on your cell phones or not um but i would admonish everybody that this is confidential um and that your business should remain in this in this room yes councilwoman thank you it, it's not really confidential because keely is on the air i understand that it's a public hearing um but you as council members are bound by confidentiality. And so just remember you're bound by those rules. And so I think if you're texting out thoughts and information, that could possibly be a violation. I'm not telling you one way or the other, but I would just remind you of that. Good morning. I just had a quick question. So, um, and this is probably for Stacy. Stacy, do they get, um, do I give them this right now or do I wait till my witnesses come in or? Okay, these can go to them. I just need. We pretty much divide it. All right, are we all ready now? All right, Miss Whiteface, you may begin. Good morning, Tribal Council. As you all know me, my name is Waisha Whiteface. Um, I'm standing here in front of you as this is probably one of the hard things I've ever done. Um, do I start off by reading my original complaint? I have never been in a situation like this in my whole life. 
You may present your evidence however you would okay. like. I believe that they, um, all the council um, members have a copy of your complaint, um, but this is your opportunity to present your complaint to the council. So do I read my witnesses statements as well? Uh, or just my complaint and what I have to say in my evidence? If, are your witnesses going to testify or yes. are they, okay, then no, you don't need to read your witness. Okay, okay. Um, again, good morning. I'm writing this complaint regarding a phone call that I received on April 13, 2021. At 439 from Councilman Garfield still. As I entered the phone call, Garfield, Garfield started speaking to me loudly and aggressively. He, had, he immediately asked me why I was talking shit about him to his girlfriend, Crystal Badwoon. I only met his girlfriend on my first day of work, which was previous day, April 12, 2021. When I started my first day of work with the Ogala Lakota Sioux Housing Emergency Rental Sits of Program and had to report to the Pine Ridge Housing Office, I was unaware what he was talking about and was complete caught off guard as to what he was speaking about whenever he called me. My entire family heard him from, heard him yelling at me very disrespectfully. I had him on speakerphone because I always have my phone on speaker, especially whenever I'm multitasking. <clears throat> Garfield asked me why Johnny Je Jenny Spotted Bear pulled his girlfriend into her office and told his girlfriend that she hopes she does not have a problem with Weisha with the friction Weisha and Garfield have. I explained to him that my only encounter with Crystal was getting introduced to her on the first day of work. Throughout the entire time, he continued to yell at me while not allowing me to get any words in or response into him. He insisted I spoke badly of him to Jenny Spotted Bear and told me that he did not give a fuck about me or even knew me on a personal level. He also said that if I have a problem with him, I can approach him or call him anytime and we'll take it from there. He still did not let me get one word in while he was hollering at me for over four minutes, demanding me to tell him what was said. In that, in that, I have the attachment of the phone call of that. He's right there, his number, the amount of time, everything. Um, after he still didn't let me speak, he told me not to go to Jenny Spotted Bear or housing because his girl is having a hard time finding a job because of him. And he didn't want her getting harassed at work because of him. And everybody knows me, I, I ask questions up front and I go straight to the source whenever I hear stuff like this, especially when it's messing with my livelihood. I, immediate, I immediately called Jenny Spotted Bear, my coworker, to ask her what was said and if she said I was talking about Garfield to his girlfriend and if she pulled her into her office. Jen said she talked to Crystal in her office but not into regards of any of that. Immediately the next morning, Garfield went into my place of work and said there is a fire about to start and I'm here to put it out. Garfield brought, and I also have evidence of him saying that in my, in my director's um, statement as well. Garfield brought in my supervisor, Mr. Brewer, regarding what had happened and wanted me and Jen Spotted Bear to get dealt with. My supervisor, Mr. Dalbert Brewer, wanted to know my side of the story and, and told me that there are two sides to every story. I explained to him what was said about Garfield's girlfriend and how she lied to Garfield about the friction with him. I'm very... At that point, I had no idea that I even had a problem with Garfield. I didn't know there was an issue there. I didn't know any of that. Um, and I don't know how, with all of this, she's not, she didn't get reprimanded through all of this or anything. I'm very appalled that Garfield went into my workplace to try, try to micromanage and tell 
leadership on how to handle our situation based on lies and accusations from his girlfriend, Crystal. I'm very scared for my job and livelihood because his actions and intimidation tactics to our female society with their tribal organization. I'm fearful of him retaliating by targeting my job and me as an OST marijuana commissioner since he is the chair of OST Economic Business Development Committee, which is the oversight committee over the OST Marijuana Commission. He has already, in one meeting, he's already been standoffish during the meeting and I feel like I'm just gonna be bullied and harassed throughout sitting on this seat by him. As an indigenous woman, I'm forever a target. I have to protect myself, not only outside my tribe, but internally within my tribe now as well. I'm exhausted from defending myself from these type of men that think they can call women names and cuss them out and basically intimidate women because they are women. A man to make any woman feel like this has no business in leadership roles within our tribe. I'm so scared for my livelihood and the fact that he may attack me or send someone to attack me, just like what happened out there. His sister literally tried to fight me out there. <laughs> Just now, when I was out there, all that ruckus you guys heard out there, she tried to attack me out there. <laughs> Your Honor, that has nothing to do with the complaint. I'm so scared for my livelihood and the fact that he may attack me or send someone to harm me and go into my work establishment to get me fired, as he already demonstrated through his actions. I have been quiet and not fed into any acts. And I let it go. I let this go. I let it go all the way up until Friday when he kept calling the office every single day. <laughs> it's, my, it's, it's my livelihood. I'm the only provider in my family. You guys know I work hard. You guys know I work hard for everything I have. I didn't grow up rich. I didn't get grew up. I didn't grow up entitled. <laughs> I'll continue, but I just have to express that. <laughs> I have been quiet and not fed into his acts, but to call my plays of work almost daily to mess with my livelihood and make false accusations and feed off of hearsay is just ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I have no part of the day. <laughs> As a woman, I'm, I'm proud, you know, I'm a proud woman. As all of us are, as Ogallala women, we're proud women. <laughs> to have a man, my whole entire family overheard him yelling at me like I was a man. <laughs> I was humiliated, embarrassed, intimidated, and shamed out in front of my own family. <laughs> We as women are forever silence as he goes on with his life, pretending like he is long and untouchable. He keeps victimizable for his actions. This is my first run in with any man in my tribe ever. I am highly educated and I have extensive experience in administration and can't believe this is happening to me within my own tribe. How is it even okay for him to go into anyone's work establishment and demand anything from anyone as an elected official? I'm so stressed out. I have never, I've been losing sleep. I haven't been trying to handle this in a professional manner as it could have been handled in a professional manner had he called me. I couldn't, we could have talked it out. Instead, he called me to humiliate and embarrass me in front of the people I provide for. And I didn't mean to have him on speakerphone. I just do because I'm always going, 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 as we do as Ogallala women. We go from the time we get off, from the day we start to the time we quit, and we still have to go home to our second job. 
So I'm forever multitasking. We still have to cook. We still have to clean, you know? I looked away not once, not twice, but three times as he kept calling my place of work and going to my place of work, all while trying to get me fired. If I stay silent, my voice will not be heard and he'll get away with intimidating another Ogallala woman within our own tribe, all off a of hearsay and lie. Lies his girl. Lies his girlfriend Crystal made up. Those were lies. And she wasn't even held accountable for it. Everything she told you was lies. When is enough enough to protect the women of our tribe from men who have temporary authority within our tribe? And this wasn't, this is what I, this is from my heart. Do you guys don't have a copy of this because it came from my heart and I really looked into what, I, what else I have to say in conclusion. Okay, I'm getting my stuff together here. I'm asking my elected leaders, my tribal official, officials and the people who we voted in to speak for us on all of the Oyate's behalf of the Ogallala Sioux tribe to acknowledge my complaint and stand with Ogallala working women within our tribe. This man has exposed himself time after time, year after year, every single time he is in a position of power or authority. The number of statements and support I have received from women throughout my tribe is sad and heartbreaking regarding this man violating their rights, including myself with threats, intimidation, humiliation, and bullying of our Ogallala women. This is not this man's first incident with a complaint from women. The record on file is outstanding and mind blowing how many women have complaints on him. When do my, re when do my leaders realize enough is enough? How many more women must come forward before justice is served on behalf of our Ogallala women? What is gonna happen to me if justice is not served after today? It is obvious this man has enough nerve, force, courage, power, and authority to go in and push his power and authority around in any program and organization to get his way. With his way, I will be immediately fired. I know it. And removed from the commission, which I worked so hard on. I did create an application. I did get all of that done. I created, did a lot for it so far. The proof is right here. He had no proof to come and attack me in front of my family. And everything he verbally attacked me all off of hearsay. As a professional, you can't go in and threaten and bully people in their work establishments. We have rules in place that you must follow to prevent situations like this. No matter what position I carry, I make sure to read policies and procedures and follow the rules as an ethical and moral person should do. Is this the way we have to do things now to not officials and demand that so-and-so needs to be fired? because she said this or that and not even have proof. This is so unethical and immoral. This is a scary and frightening moment in my life for me. And again, I refer back to just what happened up there as I was just now attacked. I have been worrying and making myself sick because of this whole situation. I didn't do anything wrong. Why do I feel like I'm gonna be immediately a target if my justice is not served today? This man will retaliate against all of us who testified against him to target our positions and we're working all so hard. I've never felt so powerless and victimized in my whole entire life. He made me a victim. I never played a victim role to nobody. I never played the victim. You guys all know I stand up for what's right and what's wrong. 
I have always had leadership roles in any position I carry. And regardless of what I have, always honored and obeyed the policies and procedures created for any program I have worked for or directed. I'm so embarrassed to be here and I feel so humiliated for having to justify, justify myself for such immature behavior and having to explain myself in front of my leaders. All because Garfield felt empowered and entitled to belittle our Ogallala women. He had no actual proof to cause such a big circus. And everything he did was all off of lies and hearsay. I have never been known to be a troublemaker or have been verbally attacked like this and to make it worse, humiliate it in front of my entire family. I do have a lot of support from so many Ogallala women and many of them do look up to me. They know I am well respected, strong, powerful, resilient, and will speak up for all of them if I need to, to speak out against this man, as many of them's voices weren't able to be heard. Again, keep in mind, this is not this man's first, second, third, or even fourth complaint he has. This is many of many complaints against him, and he should now know better. Violating my rights because his girlfriend is not something that can be justified. You don't go into people's work establishments and demand they be fired. You just can't. You don't. None of you guys are able to do that. What made him think he could? You guys can't go in there and demand someone to get fired. You just can't. It's just you can't do that. None of you guys have that power to go in there and demand someone to be terminated. Look at the picture he posted a meme about, and I posted that in my evidence. I just want to say this because this is important, and I hope you have it too. He made a meme to his wife, his soon-to-be wife. He made in the, in the meme, it says, you all are in her inbox. I'm pissing on her leg in the shower. That was made by Garth a couple days ago. That's the kind of man I'm fighting against today. That's the man I'm fighting against today. Why, why do I have to even justify myself to him to protect myself as an Oglala woman? Who does this? Who does this kind of stuff? Who really can get away with stuff like that? I don't wanna be here to be out of anger. I'm here for peace. I'm here for peacefulness. I walk that way. I walk, try to live my life every day to be at peace with my creator. That's another form. Look at the pictures he posted about the meme. How much more can he get away with degrading, threatening, humiliating, intimidating Ogallala women in our tribe? He also posts, he also made another post. And if you guys will go to that page too. I got a question. So if a woman was messing around with a guy in a car outside the casino while her man was playing poker inside, would you believe her if she told stories? And no, this ain't my relationship. What business of that is his? Why is he trying to start trouble? You guys don't do that. I never saw any of you guys post like that as leaders. What business of that is his? Why is it so much of another example of him degrading our Ogallala women? Just another example. And he's doing this to himself. You just can't be in leadership positions with this type of mentality, regardless of how you look at it. Today, I hope my tribal officials serve justice for me. I'm highly educated again, and I proudly say this, I have extensive experience behind me too, along with many women who look up to me, many women who support me. Not only in this tribe, but many tribes. I've made friends throughout our, all our tribes. I have a whole bunch of friends all over the place and they're all listening today too, within other tribes. I didn't ask to be harassed, bullied, 
intimidated by a so-called leader who I would think would protect me from incidents like this. I didn't ask for that. I didn't ask for him to attack me and what vendetta he had for that day. Instead, he made me a victim, humiliated, intimidated, and violated my rights as an Ogallala Sioux tribal member and woman. And I do not know what will happen after this hearing. I know I will be re filing a restraining order as I feel like my life will be threatened <laughs> as it just had again. Just now while I was up there, his sisters tried to fight me. <laughs> and that's what is going to happen after this is going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to become murdered or missing. And that's our whole thing. <laughs> that's what we're trying to tell you guys. Do I have to be missing or murdered to advocate that? <laughs> that's why we we brought missing and murdered indigenous women. Because I don't have protection like that. I don't have any kind of protection like that. I don't know what they're going to do to me when I leave this room right now. I, she's probably up there waiting for me. And if I have to, I'm fighting back. I'm going to fight back. I'm not going to let her and his family bully me as I walk out of here. All I did was go upstairs to make copies for you guys. And his sisters and aunties attacked me up there. <laughs> He made me a victim, humiliated, intimidated. My rights as an Ogallala woman, I don't know what will happen. I will be refiling a restraining order. I feel my life will be threatened by this man. He came at me once. I don't know what he is capable of next, like just now. And I wanted to ask him today, as a woman, as a kind-hearted woman that we are. We're all like that. We all get the benefit of the doubt, but he's not here. I can't even ask him. How can we help him to change his behaviors? How can we help this man change his behavior so he stops doing this to our Ogallala women? <laughs> I can't even ask him because he couldn't even hear the truth. <laughs> and I forgive him, but how can we help this man stop? <laughs> As a healthy woman, how do we help this man stop his behavior from hurting our Ogallala women like he has? <laughs> and that's big of me. I the grudge against him. I could be no was literally attacked up there. How can I still come to him today and be like, how can we help you guys? You're a member of our tribe. You're supposed to be a leader. So many people depend on him, you know? And it's big of me to say, how can we as Ogallala women help you so you stop victimizing us? threatening us, humiliating us. But I can't ask him because he's walked out. He don't want to hear what, what, what I have to say. And I am, I, I never, this is embarrassing for me, you guys, because I always try to present myself as a professional woman to you guys. And to be here, I feel this big. See me and I'm always upbeat. And today, I feel this big, this big, and I don't know. So if I can ask you why you came back, Garb, how can we help you as from our Ogallala women? How can we help you stop your patterns? Miss Whiteface, I will allow you the opportunity to question him when it's okay. his um, turn to present evidence. Okay. And I do have my my witnesses. If I can call one of them in, or do I need to call them in now? Or I don't know the process. But thank you guys. Thank you for listening to me. And I hope what I had to say makes you guys realize the leader we have in this mission today. Councilman Steele, do you have any questions? And I would ask just in this whole process. I know it's very contentious, but. Let's all be respectful of each other, please. Okay. 
Thank you. In regards to your statement, you said you only met my girlfriend on the first day of work at housing, correct? Yes. Um, and then you said your whole entire family, your whole entire family was was present when I made the call, is it correct? Yes. Can you, um, so you got a mother? My family. Yeah. My family. My, oh, you said, my... your, you said your whole entire family. You, you made it sound like. That is know, our whole entire family. So your mom, your brothers, sisters, children, spouse, nephews, nieces? No, my, 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 my foundation. Okay, because you said your whole entire family. That is my whole entire family. That's my foundation. Everyone and, that I listed. And then Jess, what's his name? Spotted Bear or, or what? Jess? Poor Jess Bear. Bear. What's his relationship to you? That's my daughter in law. Daughter in law. Now, prior to this, this um, alleged incident, have have I ever threatened you or talked aggressively towards you? Yes. What, um, could you tell me when? If you were sitting here listening, that's all I've been talking about. And then in my statement, the, everything that you said to me? No, I meant prior to that, like throughout the years, I, I, I've known you for some time and mm. have I ever approached you aggressively and threatened you or? No, not before that. And in your statement, you're saying I call almost daily. Not me. To your office. Mm -hmm. Do, Ms. Would you? Oh, Miss White, please, mm -hmm. please let him. Okay, yeah, I thought him. he was done because he. So he's talking like he was done. So I thought he was okay. Done. Just let him ask the question and then you can answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he needs to do the same. So you said I call almost daily to your workplace. Where am I calling? Overall, I see Lakota housing. Okay. And do you know the individual that I speak with on a daily asking for you? Not for me. You were calling in regards about if the fire was going to be put out to. Okay. So who do I call on a daily? You called Jen I Dalbert, call... and I have the proof in the back. I call Jen daily. Is that what you're mm -hmm. saying? Okay. And then you're saying I call Dalbert daily? Mm hmm Okay. And he has a statement in the back of here, too. Yeah, I've seen it. So you're saying I call Jen and Dalbert daily. And what am I saying to Not Jen? Not daily, and just within that week. Oh, no, you're saying daily. You're, you're in your statement. In your statement, mm -hmm. you're saying that I call, call my workplace of work almost daily to mess with my livelihood and make false accusations and feed off. What are the false accusations that I'm saying to Jen and Dalbert daily? To make sure that our fi the fire is going to be put. You're there to make sure a fire is put out. And that's daily. Daily. Well, daily within that week that this happened. So would you know I should have referred back to it throughout the week, the whole week since the first incident happened to the end of the week. But still, that's extensive and not acceptable. So would you know how much times I called? I could say about four times. Four times called. And, and that's daily? Like... Four times a day or just, I just called four times? Four times a day. Well, no, four times, four, four days. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I, so I called four days. Would you know which days those were? So I could look on my phone log? Um, I don't know the exact days. Dalbert has some on his. Because I recall Dal calling Dalbert once the day after and I never have talked to Dalbert after that. Well. That's what you want to say. Oh, no, that's You're what I am to saying. say what you want to say, but that's not what I heard. Okay. Um, and then it, you say that you're fearful 
for your position as a marijuana commissioner because I'm the chair of the Economic and Business Development Committee. And you say that I'm standoffish during meetings and I feel like I'm, you're getting bullied and harassed. Um, how much meetings have you sat with myself in a EB&D meeting? I believe we sat on two. Um, we got records and, and I asked uh, Gracie, who will be a, a witness, that um, you've only sat in one meeting with us being a, a board member. Mm -hmm. And do you recall that meeting? Um, I remember I sat down on the EBND meeting when I first got sat seated, and then we had another meeting and prior to the budget, and then they forwarded that, that from that the finance a, to EBND, yeah, and then was, we had another meeting, yeah, and I a, believe that was last week. Yeah, that was a finance meeting. I'm talking about EBND meeting. Well, and e, well, finance and EB, EBND, um, it still felt like you were targeting me. Belittle me and how would you say that i mean what what was i saying that belittled you or targeted you it's basically because of the fact that you um because of the amount of stuff that i have done for the commission so far um you basically just fully recognized jenny lee for everything and you only spoke to her when i was asking questions as well and you would only respond back to her in those meetings, in that last meeting last week. So because I only <laughs> mentioned Jenny Lee, you feel that I was bullying you or or harassing you? Yeah, it, that's the way it came off of. That's exactly how I felt. Okay, so I bullied you because I, I didn't acknowledge you. Um, to your knowledge, as a, um, and, and, and I, I know you said you didn't know too much about tribal government. Um, do you know how committees work? Yes, I know how committees work. Okay, so do you know that chairmen don't vote in committees? <clears throat> yes, I know that. So as a chairman of EBND, would you say that I couldn't make motion to get rid of you because I can't vote? No, I, I should have, in my statement, I should have said finance. I didn't know I was going to be just in the meetings i should have just said meetings that we've attended together because i had asked him some questions and he only spoke to jenny lee and that's what kind of made and me that, feel that way that was the bullying okay it, it may belittle me okay. totally x me out made me non-existent okay then also in your statement you said that uh, um Let me look here. I requested your leadership. I went in and I tried to micromanage I went into your, your workplace to try to micromanage and tell leadership how to handle our situation based on lies and accusations from my girlfriend. Um, where, where did you hear that information? Because you wasn't present, correct? Was you present in that meeting? No, I wasn't present. So um, I, to my understanding, no, and this and this is why it came up to this. And I wasn't even going to file a complaint on you, Garth. I was not going to file him do his thing, you know, whatever he does to our women. I mean, I was going to let it go, totally let it. The question about I'm here to put a fire out. How would any woman take that? How would any woman take that? I'm here to put a fire out that's about ready to be started. And I only know that because of the fact Jenny called me upset because she, I was like, okay, so what do you want to do? We're being threatened. We're being intimidated, you know, pulling his, the CEO of housing in to the meeting. Miss Whiteface. Yes. Please just answer his question. And then we'll, I am answering it. You'll I'm get an opportunity it. to um, present. You okay. get the, in a second, go ahead. Okay, so you go in there and you say, I'm gonna put out this fire. 
did you see me in that meeting say it like, I'm going to put out this fire? No, but we have documents from both. We have documentation I know, no, for I'm both. Ask, I know. They're, at some point, they're going to give their testimony, but I'm mm -hmm. asking you. Mm -hmm. Did you see me going to this meeting and say, I'm going to put out this fire? No. Okay. So that's a third party story, correct? Not. I have documentation, is it? Yeah, I mean, from your story, from yeah. on your story, third it's a third party story. story. Just like, just like Crystal was, yeah. Yeah, okay. So then that's a third party story. And you're seeing here that. Um, um, where was it at? You said that, uh, okay, so I, I was on the phone with you for four minutes, correct? Yes. And so for this whole entire four minutes, me and you talked, it was just me hollering at you, yelling at you, screaming at you, cussing, right? Yes. And can in those four minutes, was there ever a time where, where I wasn't hollering? No. Okay. You hollered at me the whole entire four minutes. You did not let me even try to tell you that. You wouldn't hear anything I had to say to you. Um, and then you see, um, you mentioned in here female societies within our tribal organizations. Can you name some of the female um, societies within our tribal organizations? I don't have documentation on it, Garth, but be because, be from your prior impeachment hearings? No, no, no I'm not talking about I'm referring about my, to all of the women. Okay, I'm not talking about my There's prior impeachment. There's several women you have hurt, hurt and offended that work within our whole tribal industry. Oh, no, so I'm talking about societies. Me. Societies. Yes. Um, it's just, what, 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 can you name some of the societies within our tribal organizations? All women who that felt threatened by you? No, I'm a society. I, that's what I mean. In my words, I mean a society. Like just outside, all women like in general. Like a society, yes. Okay, and then okay, so in your statement, you're saying that I go in there and I try to get you fired. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Who do I try to get you fired from? Ogallala Sula Lakota Housing. Yeah, but who am I asking to fire you? My boss. Who's your Dalbert boss? Brewer. So Okay, so I, I'm asking Dalbert if I if I tried if, to fire you. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. And his statement is in the back of. Yeah, I, I see. Okay. Is he staying? That I went in there and told him to fire you. What does what what did you exactly mean whenever you said, "I'm here." there's a fire about to start and i'm here to doubt what did you mean by that can i ask you that no um any woman okay, so, to fire so once again you stated you weren't in a meeting correct when i met with jenny um john still and dalbert you weren't in a meeting no so you don't know how i asked the question is that correct yes or no you don't know how i asked the question no okay well, just according no. to their statements. Okay, well, I'm asking about you. You're, you're, I'm, I'm asking you how you went in there. Mm -hmm. You weren't in there, correct? Mm -mm. So you don't know how I asked the question. I do kind of because they, well, they, they told me exactly how you said it. <laughs> no, but, but that, I wasn't that's, there. That, no, but they told so, me exactly yeah, how you said it. Yeah, but you never seen me ask that question. No. Okay. Um. I just have a couple of questions for myself so that I'm sure where we're at here. Uh, 
Miss Whiteface, your um, your on this telephone call from April 13, 2021, correct? Yes. As well as uh, Councilman Steele's coming to your work. Yes. And you believe that he was asking that you be fired based on his statement that I'm here to put a fire out or there's a fire here. Yes. Okay. And so then what are you well, at? Well, I can't even use that, but her story will have be more in depth. She should have went first because she has it, everything. And then I just only got the phone call. Okay. And what exactly are you asking the council to do? To impeach Garfield. Okay. For cause or based on a violation of the code of ethics? For a violation of the code of ethics. Okay, and specifically, <clears throat> what is that violation? Intimidating and bullying Ogallala women. Okay, so now you may um, call your witnesses. I see that um, a couple of these witnesses were witnesses to the telephone call. Yes. Um, I'm fine with you calling all of them, but I, I don't think the council needs cumulative evidence. Okay. So if they're all going to say the same thing, mm -hmm. they all pretty much do. Okay. So let's, um, I'm fine with you calling all of them, but please be mindful that we don't need cumulative evidence. So can I let my daughter speak? Oh. Yes. Okay. You may. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, r real quick, Wayshaw, you got, um, you got Dalbert's statement in front of you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me which part of his statement, incident one, two, three, or four, mm -hmm. where I threatened you to get fired? Um, probably in part. Where I, I, I went in there and told him to fire you. Garfield, I mean, not Garfield, but um, Dalbert is really, he's our elder, you know? So this was hard for him making because of the fact that um, he can't always remember everything, but um, I'm, well, I'm, but right where it says in two, and um, he basically says, um, Garfield accompanied John Yellowbird still came into my office. Both Jennifer and I were present for the unannounced visit. Garfield proceeded to imply there was a fire in our ERAP program and, and included his girlfriend, Crystal. Well, and basically, that didn't say it exactly how. Okay, but, but that she don't, has that don't mention she has your name on there. That don't mention your name in there. I'm, I'm asking, where does this statement say I went in there to say to fire you, Waisha Whiteface? Because this whole situation, and that's why we, I wish we could have read Jen's before No, mine. I know, and I'm asking yeah. based on the, the statement provided by Mr. Um, Dalbert Brewer. Because you're, well, this is, I can't even say that because I couldn't get a statement from your uncle. Of course, he wouldn't give us the statement of everything that he's been tallying, but the fact that it came from your uncle John, who told him that you wanted us to be dealt with in holding positions over our head. Okay, so now you're saying John stated that I want you guys dealt with? Mm hmm John. John stated, still. Saying that I want you and guys And of course with. he's not going to testify for me or Jen. It's, of course he's not going to. That's your uncle. Yeah. And uh, Dal Dalbert's my uncle too. Mm hmm So you're saying John still wanted me or wanted you guys dealt with you're saying John made that You statement. demanded John, you demand, right. you called your uncle John, you demanded John to have me and Jenny Spotted there dealt with. And who made that statement? Your uncle John. I know, who do you make that statement to? To Dalbert. To Dalbert. So John wanted Dalbert to, are you saying fire, he wanted? When it, Dalbert to fire you guys? Whatever you mean by doubt with, don't act like you don't know. No, no, I'm you asking know. you. Wait, wait. No, I'm asking you. Let's be respectful, not argumentative. I'm, I'm, Everybody I'm not. just wants to hear 
the evidence. Yeah, okay? and, and that's I'm, and so I I'm think, asking my questions. Come okay. And, and that's all I'm asking is just I'm simply asking my questions and writing notes down. I'm cautioning both of you. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Do you have anything no, further? No, I just, okay. So, just real quick. So, based on the statement of Mr. Dalbert Brewer, incident number two, is your name mentioned anywhere on incident number two? Where it says that I wanted you fired? No. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further, Councilman? No. Okay. If you would like to call your witnesses, you may do so now. Okay, um, Dalbert's not here. Would I be able to read his statement? But it, he did a statement for us, but he's not here. Are, are, will you guys be able to read that on your own? I believe the council can read. Okay. And we'll read it on their own. Okay. So I want to do bring my daughter in. And if I can. We want to keep it a little light, right? <laughs> yes, you may. Okay. <laughs> Okay, if you could state your name and then um, just remember that we're here to find the truth. And so we'd appreciate if you would tell the truth, um, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And um, you have the floor and you can be questioned by Councilman Steele. Okay. My name is Taisha Big Crow. My mother is Waisha Whitefanks. Um, on April 13th, 2021, right when my mom, Waisha Whiteface, got home from work, she got a call from a man that was yelling at her and was asking my mom why she was talking shit about him to his girlfriend. Whoever this man is was talking to my mom loud and mean, which made me scared for her. After the call, I learned the guy on the phone was someone named Garfield Still and that he is on the tribal council. During the entire call, this man kept speaking mean and loud towards my mom and didn't give her a chance to respond because he kept speaking over her when she tried to talk. Me and my mom and Jess and Sylvester were all listening to him talk to my mom and yell at her disrespectfully. I have never in all of my life ever heard a man speak to my mother the way he spoke to her. The part I did hear clearly was him asking her why Jenny Spotted Bear pulled his girlfriend into her office and told his girlfriend that she hopes she does not have a problem with Waisha with the friction Waisha and Garfield have. My mom tried to explain that she only met his girlfriend once in the day before. Garfield also stated that if she has a problem with him, she can approach him or call him anytime and he will take it from there. He once again cut my mother off yelling in frustration and anger towards my mom. Garfield kept demanding and screaming that he kept, that he tell her, kept telling her to tell him that he, what he was mad. He also told my mother that he did not give a fuck about her I know her on a personal level, still not letting her respond. He demanded my mom not go to Jenny Spotted Bear or to housing because his girl has a hard time finding a job because of him and he didn't want her to be harassed at work because of him. I never pay attention to my mother's phone calls when it comes to business. She is a very professional and usually can hold her own to anyone she comes across. However, this phone call alone frightened and scared me for my mother. I don't know who this man is and why he was hollering at her in such a disrespectful way. It made me so upset. And when my mom got off the phone with him, as he hung up on her, I felt bad for her. Not even my mother's own father or brother speak to her how she was spoken to that day. That call was unprofessional and threatening to her from my own point of view. I wasn't raised to a man hollering at my mother. In my family, the women are sacred and treasured. She is my hero and someone I look, to, look up to and hope to be like. I hope justice is served for my mother today and to give me hope and confidence that my tribal leaders will protect all women in my tribe, including my mother from abusive, threatening and intimidating men like this man himself. 
my generation is coming up and this behavior is not something my generation wants to be a part of. The youth of the Ogallala Sioux tribe is watching your decision you make today and I hope it is a decision you make from the heart, honest, ethical and a moral decision from my elected leaders. Showing my generation that ethical decisions will be enforced against anyone who acts in such aggressive, mean, assaulting and unethical behaviors, unacceptable and discipline is enforced. Sincerely, Taisha Big Crow. Thank you, Taisha. Now, uh, Councilman Steele, do you have any questions? No questions? No, I do. Oh, okay. Um, did, you, um, did you type this letter yourself? Yes. Um, do you recall the entire phone call? Yes, I was sitting in the living room when she walked home. She walked, she just walked in the door and she got a phone call and she always has it on speaker. Would you be able to repeat the, the conversation? No, I have everything that I remember in my statement. So you wouldn't be able to remember anything in a phone call? I what? remember how threatening you was and how you was talking to her and how you didn't let her talk one time that whole time. So when I was talking to your mother, what? What did I say that I was threatening? And and if you heard the phone call, can you please repeat some of the the discussions we had? I heard you tell her that your girlfriend has a hard time because you're her man and that she was that you're scared that she's not gonna have a job because of you and because you think that my mom and Jenny are bullying her. So you're, you're saying that I said your mom and Jenny were bullying her in this discussion? Yes. I said your mom. Do you recall anything else in the conversation? Um, no, not right now. Okay, because in your mother's statement, she don't, she don't write in there that I, I in our conversation, myself and your mom, that I said her and Jenny were bullying my girlfriend. That was never stated in your mother's statement. So you heard that in our conversation? Yes. So when when I first called your mom, do you recall the first thing I said? And then how it transpired into um, a conversation as far as um, what was stated with Jenny and my girlfriend in the office. Can you can you elaborate on that conversation? Some how it started off. How did I start off? You asked her what was said to your girlfriend, and then you proceeded to tell her what you heard from Jenny, saying that or what your girlfriend told you that Jenny said, saying that she was called into Jenny's office and asked, said that Jenny said, I hope there's no friction between you and Weisha with the Garf and Weisha situation. And then what else after that? And then you proceeded to um, holler at her and ask her what was said and- So I hollered at her for four minutes saying what? Asking her what was said when she just and not yeah and not letting just her answer you. Just saying what was said, what was said, what was said, what was said. That's all I kept saying. <laughs> no, Garf. Oh no, no. I'm just saying because you said I repeatedly asked what was said, what yes, was said, we basically what was said, did. just like that yes. for four minutes. For four minutes. Yes. Um, when you were sitting out in the hall just now, did you listen to your mom's testimony? Yes. How did you listen? On my phone, on Keely. Thank you. The witnesses should not, they were sequestered, meaning they shouldn't be listening to the testimony. That's why we had them removed. 
Who? That's what I said. But they shouldn't be listening to it. She, she left whenever you guys made that. No, I'm not. I'm. It's a. It's. Okay. It's. It's okay. I'm just curious. Is other people? Are the other witnesses listening to it? Yes. Okay. They should not be listening to it because I said that they were sequestered, meaning they can't hear the evidence. None of them are aware of that. <laughs> Is it being broadcast out there? It's, in the, it's on KOLC, you're being watched. I understand that, but is it being, like, is it well, out? They have their phones, they're they listening. Their phones on the radio. Okay. On the radio. I would ask all the witnesses that are listening to not be listening. Probably should go tell them. Someone should go tell them right now. <laughs> Yes, Councilwoman. Would you recommend a security sit with them and uh, monitor that they're not listening in? Yes. Right. So, so I, in regards to this and 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 whatnot, you know, that should have been made very clear at the beginning when we when you sequestered these witnesses and made it very clear that. They should not be listening, especially during this time. And I think right now it's kind of pointless to put them in a room and tell them don't listen because we've already heard from one witness. We've already heard from one from both parties. So I think right now it kind of defeats the purpose of sequestering anybody. And and it's already on KOLC. It's already on Kiwi Radio. So for me, I think we kind of just when you said sequestered, I think it should have been to the point and saying, you don't need to be listening on your phone. You don't need to, and we should have put them in a room. We should have thought about this and, and put them with security and said, don't, you, you're not allowed to listen. But now it's already too late. Thank you for that. Um, that is, I guess, on me for not clarifying what sequestering means. However, it's not a requirement that the witnesses be sequestered. The council is the final judge. You all will be able to weigh the evidence, weigh the credibility of the witnesses. We've heard from one party. We've heard from one witness and we're going to proceed forward. Um, as I've outlined, the remaining witnesses need to be sequestered. They should not have access to listen in. That was the point of them being removed. Um, so however that needs to happen, if we need to take a break to make sure that no further issues with the witnesses, um, let's do that. And we can come back in like 10 minutes. I think, and we've been sitting here for a I, while. I have a question. I have to ask Garf a few questions. Is that no? Do I do that now? Or nope. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Do you have any other witnesses? Yes, I do. Okay. And who are they? Um, Sylvester is out there, and then I do have um just my statements for my daughter-in-law. Okay, but there. are they going to just read what they have already submitted? Um, about they, the telephone call. Um, yeah, probably like pretty much. I, his is a little different, but from what he heard. <laughs> Do they have any other information outside of the telephone call that they will be offering? No, okay. they don't have any other information. Just the tell, it, it just happened. They were all in the room whenever he was on speakerphone yelling at me. Okay, let's take a 15 minute break and come back. Oh, lunch is ready. So we're just gonna eat lunch, okay? Thank you. Um, and to be clear, the witnesses should not be speaking with each other and having lunch and sitting with uh, anybody that hasn't testified yet, okay? Does someone want to do a quick prayer? 
<laughs> Mike, can you say mill prayer? Takashla, today we face a major decision that we have to make. But today we pray, Tokashla, that the food that's prepared for us will help us in our decision making. We pray for the families, Tokashla, that are suffering. We pray that this meal today is going to be the nourishment that we need, Tokashla, to make sound decision. We pray and we thank the people that prepared this meal. We pray that all of our family here together, Tokashla, that we can still be united regardless in the outcome. We pray, Tokashla, each and every day for your help. As a nation, Tokashla, we suffer a great deal, and we pray that your help can make us endure the struggles that we face each and every day.
Did you just not put that money in there? Lance tells me that we have 17, so we are going to start. Um, Miss Whiteface, you may call your next witness. Good afternoon, sir. Could you just please state your name? Sylvester Thomas. Sylvester Thomas. Thank you. And I would remind, or I guess you haven't been in here. Um, the council is here to determine, you know, this complaint, and they would like to hear the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So please um, help us understand what is happening. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Beth Duwash State Council, appreciate your time, opportunity to say my words on the situation. Um, on uh, April 13th, uh, I picked up Boesha from work, got right back from, right back home. And uh, as soon as we got home, she received a call from uh, Councilman Garfield Steele. And she, of course, had it on speaker and, and his immediate his immediate tone and uh, words is used in the way his his tone and his words where he's uh, was kind of speaking in an aggressive manner. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll read this though. Um, way she answered her phone on speaker as she always does when Garfield started to speak to her in a loud, aggressive and threatening manner while asking her why she was talking shit about him to to his girlfriend. He asked Waisha why Jen spotted Bell or pulled his girlfriend into her office told his girlfriend that she hopes that she does not have no problem with Waisha due to the friction between Garfield and Waisha. And uh, the one was uh, me, Waisha, Jess, and Taisha. And uh, myself, I was, I was just completely speechless um, because of his tone and his aggressiveness. And uh, the way he is kind of like, due to his tone and aggressiveness, it came across as threatening. And the way he was speaking to her, I, I have never heard a woman, any a man speak to a woman, Oglala Lakota woman. Never heard anyone speak to Aisha like that, and it just took me by surprise. Um, during the entire, the entire interaction, Garfield did continue to yell and overtalk Aisha in a threatening way. He insisted that she spoke badly of him to Jen Spotter Bear and told Waisha that he did not give a fuck about her or even know her on a personal level or anything like that. Garfield also uh, stated that if Waisha had a problem with him, that she could approach or call him anytime and would take it from there. And of course, he's, you know, being very disrespectful and threatening, did not let her speak, just kept over speaking her. Um, he also told her not to, uh, Waisha made the comment that she, you know, she's going to call Jen and uh, Garfield housing because his girl has a hard time finding a job because of him and he didn't want her to get harassed uh, at work because of him and um, that was pretty much uh, the gist of what I what I heard and then Waisha immediately called uh, I believe it was former OST secretary spotted bear and they started speaking privately that's a, kind of what my experience with that situation was. Thank you, Miss or Councilman Steele. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, you stated just now that you picked up Weisha, and then when you picked Weisha, then she received the call. Is that correct? When we got home. You know. She received the call, yep, right as we got home. Right as you walk in the door, do you recall which right part of the home you were in? We were in our 
living room, I believe. But yeah, rise we you got believe? Home, pretty much. She got she got, Where you are, were you not in the living room? We were in the house pretty much around each other. You could just hear what was immediately what you said. And how far away was your I believe your daughter? We we're all right there. So you much. guys were all just monitoring her phone? We stayed, we're sitting in the living room, watching TV, doing their thing, their homework, their classes. and So they were doing called. homework and watching TV and at the same time listening to her conversation? Well, your conversation kind of, it's quiet. We don't really have it, the house loud. So your, your voice kind of came, your, your voice was the loud noise in the room at that point. So it immediately caught our attention. Okay, so, so the TV going, they were doing homework, heard my conversation. Um, when, because, uh, I mean, pretty much all the statements are starting out the same way. Um, as a man, do you, do you feel that it's your responsibility to protect your women, your woman? I think it's the responsibility of every Oglala man to protect okay, our women, so, especially men that are sitting in authority positions okay, that so, might have influence over our women. So, so yes, I believe Oglala men should protect our women so with that being said if i was yelling hollering cussing at your girlfriend why didn't you get on the phone and and address me at that time it really wasn't my place due to it being her related to her work you know i don't i that's kind of her thing so i, I really i didn't know what's going on to tell you the truth i had no idea what was happening what transpired but but didn't you just say you got off? She got off of work. You picked her up, off, so you knew she wasn't at work because she got off of work. Had nothing to do with work. You received a phone call. You heard a male screaming, yelling, cussing at your girlfriend. I heard you. Yeah, yeah. And yelling okay, and yeah. You heard her. me. Okay. Um, no, well, well, what I'm getting to. Please, just let's be mindful of. You have to ask the question. And then he has to answer, he has to answer, and then you can ask another question. We can't talk over each other, and let's stick to the, it is the, what he testified to. Okay, yeah, then okay. that's what it is. Okay, So, no, um, um, what I'm alluding to is, is questioning everyone's presence. That's what I'm alluding to. I mean, if, if someone girlfriend yelling cussing address my woman like that but then that's why i'm alluding to you know your presence any man would protect your woman any man no doubt you just made that statement but that morning I, I, got, I got it on relevant. my phone log. I don't see how that's relevant to the, the complaint here. It, it is relevant, and that's what I'm getting to. Do. Everything that was stated on so far that was given testimony, some of it was irrelevant to the situation, but it was allowed to be asked. And so I'm asking the same thing. Do you recall the, the next morning when you called me? Again, I don't know how that's relevant to this. Please answer the question. Yes, I do recall calling you. Okay. So when you called me that next morning, the first thing you stated to me was you said, what the F did you say to my woman? So no, if you sir. said, what the F did you say to my woman? You just stated that you heard the whole conversation with your woman. I asked you if uh, during that call, what you had to say to Weisha that you can't say to me. And then from there, you started getting irate, start saying the F word, every other word. Tell me you're down in Manderson, come down to Manderson, that you'll meet me somewhere, and just basically go on that route with it. No, I'll, I'll, a, I'll give my testimony when that comes to that and, part. But And I'm a professional man. I, I got my master's degree. I don't, you know, I don't I have no ties to you. I don't need anything from you. You know, I, I know that's related to her work. As her work, that's for me not to get involved. Or That's why I did not speak up. And I'm a, you know, I'm a sun dancer. I, I believe in respecting women. And you caught me completely by surprise. You know, you caught me completely by surprise. I have your way of approaching her at that moment. So, 
So can you can you describe like start off with the conversation? I, I when I called, she answered. Can you can you um, reiterate the conversation, how it started off, and where it eluded into this this threat? Can you talk about the conversation, how I started the call? It's in my testimony in the first paragraph. If you reread it, no, I'm, I don't. Said, I don't want to know what you started off with by asking her what was said about your your uh, girlfriend or some to that nature along the the first part of the call. So you didn't hear the conversation too well. I was right there for the conversation. I was right next to her. Okay, so you heard just about every word. Yeah, but the conversation was so rapid and so out of the norm that I'm not used to, you know, hearing people, especially men talk to women like that, that it just caught me completely by surprise, you know? So I, this I, is, this was your first time engaging in a man talking like that to a woman in your whole life. I don't hear typically men talking to women like that. No, I don't, I don't, I don't so support the, that. I don't, you know, so in this conversation, anyway. did you hear me repeatedly say, what'd she say? What'd she say? What'd she say, he kept uh, forcing her to add, tell tell you what um, in different variances of the question of what was said. So how long did I repeat that word? The conversation last you you were kind of all over the place with it, and just you know, like I said, it was so much so fast to where I was caught off guard, and I was surprised by this phone call from you as you know elected leader. I represents your district and your people that you'd be talking to her like that. So it completely took me by surprise. And, you know, I work in professional environments. I'm a businessman. And, and that did leave me speechless. You know, no, so, no man should speak to any Oglala woman like that, you know, using their authority or otherwise. No man. There's no place for that. There's no justification for any Oglala man to talk to an Oglala woman in that manner. That's that's my feeling. That's my take so, on it. So you said the conversation jumped all over. What what was I talking about, and where did it jump to? If it was jumping all over in certain areas of the conversation, what other topic was we talking about, and how was it, it jumping? If, if you read my statement, it kind of tells you the timeline of what was said, when it was said, and in the conversation. No, I'm not around. asking what's on the statement. I'm asking you if you my can. My statement does have that information. If you well, can you it. verbally explain that to the council? what what conversation i had and what it jumped to another conversation and then it jumped to another because you said it jumped all over what was the conversation what i just read to you in my statement you want me to reread my statement on april 13th at 4 39 p.m waisha whiteface received a call from councilman garfield still on her personal cell phone waisha answered her phone on speaker as she always does when she's busy she's usually busy getting a lot of calls to help them out the up in that in that area with the program but she, Waisha answered her phone on speaker as she always does when Garfield started speaking to her in a loud, aggressive, and threatening manner while asking Waisha why she was talking shit about him to his girlfriend. Garfield asked her why Jen Spotted Bear pulled his girlfriend into her office and told his girlfriend that she hoped she does not have a problem with Waisha due to the friction with Waisha and Garfield have. And during that whole time, yes, we were all right there. We could all hear her phone on speaker. And, and I was appalled. I was completely shocked, surprised, and appalled that, you know, a so-called Oglala leader was speaking to one of our Oglala women like this, you know. And during the interaction, you did continue to yell at Waisha while talking over her in an aggressive and threatening way. You insisted that Waisha spoke badly of him to Jenny Spotterbear and told Waisha that he did not. You told Waisha this, and this sticks out because what councilman, what leader uses the F word? You said, I... You do not give a f about her, or even her on a pers or even knew her on a personal level. You also stated that if she has a problem with you, that you can approach you anytime, and you take it from there. And then you kept just over talking her while she was trying to get some response in. Okay, so I I, I read. I'm pretty sure we all read your statement, and they all pretty much sound the same. They're similar. What I'm trying to get is from a verbal statement, from a verbal conversation that I had with Mrs. Whiteface that you heard clearly because you were right there. Yep. You guys all gathered around the phone. You stopped watching TV. You stopped doing your homework. You guys all focus in on this conversation because you heard a man yelling at the phone. And at, at no time you, 
you interjected, but you, you stood there by the phone. I want to know what, what was the conversation. If you can repeat the conversation and, and what was I yelling? That's, that's what I'm trying to get to. Not what was on your statement. Cause for four minutes, it's a long time to talk. And if it was just repeatedly, what did you say? What did you say? What did you say? Like was stated in one of the other statements, you know, there, there had to be a more to this conversation. I want to know what, you know, not what's written. I want to hear verbally what the conversation was with Wisha. The conversation subject just went along those lines in within the statement. It was about you put, asking why she said, Jenny, spotted bear, pulled your girlfriend into the office, and you kept going off on that. And whenever she tried to respond that, yes, I'm going to call Jen spotted bear to get to the bottom of this. You were like, no, 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 don't do that. I'll talk to them. Yes. So, you know. So. I told her I would talk to Jen. You you said not to contact housing. But I would talk to Jen. That you would not. You said you would not. You would con. Yeah, you said that you you basically told her no, 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 don't don't contact. And but you said I boss. would talk to Jen, correct? I think I misspoke on that one. Okay. Um. So why did it take you a whole day? to call me in because you were really upset when you called me that morning. It took you a whole day to call me back. If you were present, if I was present, I would have addressed right there, but it took you a whole day to call me back to say, what the F did you say to my woman? I'm a professional. I don't say things out of anger, out of feelings, out of emotions, you know? So whenever I I wanted to find out the time was right. That's why I reached out to you and asked you what you could say, what you said to Waisha that you can't say to me. But my conversation was with Waisha. I had nothing to do with you. I had no intentions of talking to you whatsoever. If I if I wanted to call you, I would have got your number. Like I did reach out to her and I asked her to call and she called me. But if I wanted to speak to you, I would have called you. But at no time did I did. Um, you, you talked about being a businessman. Have you ever came in front of the council for a position? Um, I believe I did. Yeah, a few times trying to see where I can help out. Councilman Steele, can we're getting a little, little far off field here. Let's okay. go back to if you have questions about what he has testified to or what he has provided. I'm, I'm done. I'm okay, done. thank you. Does anybody else have any questions for this witness? I just got one question. Um, I heard this a few times. Um, in a threatening manner, um, how do you perceive as that being on the phone, the threatening part? I guess uh, like the aggressiveness, the intimidation, the words, you know, like the, the way, you know, how he is speaking loudly and demeaning toward her, you know, so it was the aggressive tone, the way he approached the whole situation. You know, an average individual, you know, will, will come with a clear mind and want to talk this out. They wouldn't want to, you know, immediately get on the phone and start threatening or, or acting in that manner with aggressive tones. And, and you know, the, the way he approached it was very threatening. And if, you know, like I said, it just shocked me and left, left me speechless, you know, uh, that it was coming from somebody that sits within a circle that's, that's talking our Oglala. We as I was all women like that, you know, and and yeah, I just I, I, my myself, I, I Sundance, and I, I just don't believe that that's how it should be approached. And the way I was raised, and you know, the family I come from, I just that's just not right. It's just you don't talk to anyone like that, not even another man. You know, you should come at everyone with respect and in a good way. And that's how I was raised. I mean, you know, I can't say that, you know, that he was raised that way. And maybe he, that's the normal to him that you can talk to people, women in these aggressive type of ways with those tones. But to me, that's just not right. You, you just don't do that to no woman. You know, they're, they're, come, they're the ones that bring the life to this earth for us. You know, why treat them like that? Why disrespect them like that regardless? So that's, yeah. That's why I took it that way. I have a question. Um, two questions. 
Were you in the uh, general area during the phone call? Yes, I was right next to Aisha. I, we, I open the door, she walks in, I hold the door open for her. She walks right, right in front of me, I follow her right in. And yes, we were all in the living room when he got that call. And I couldn't say that, you know, Jess and Tay, she was, you are doing homework. They were doing their thing on the couch. I couldn't say for a fact that they were doing homework, but to me, I always assume they are. So yes, we were all right there. We all heard it and we all experienced it with her. Hold on, Councilwoman. Did you have something? Yeah, I just wanted to say I thought she recused herself, so you instructed to maybe not answer any questions or, yeah. or, or ask any questions. I left that up to her own. That was, that was why I asked the question earlier, because Weisha is not my relative. I have no ties with Weisha. And if we're going to treat the hearing separately, that was why I asked the question, should, when should I recuse myself um, out of respect for the poll process? Is it necessary I recuse myself now, or should I recuse myself with Jennifer, or should I recuse myself from the whole process? I trust that you will be able to make that differentiate, like be able to differentiate between those cases, Councilwoman. So if you have no relation and don't believe that you're um, violating any ethical obligation you have to this council, you are free to ask the questions of this witness. Yes. And that's why I asked at the beginning that it keep separate because regardless of, of, of the situation, Jen is, and, and you said it, these, these complaints are together. And I feel that being the sister to Jen, she should completely recuse herself. And, and that is what the questioning, because I mean, it's the same question. I just asked him that she asked of him, you know, and, and why weren't the other uh, um, individuals questioned by the council just you know, we, the, the other witnesses weren't questioned, only myself. And then now we're allowing questioning. Uh, I'm going to allow the council to ask questions of Miss Whiteface after all of her witnesses have gone forward. And then I'd be able to ask more, correct? Uh, no, she, that's, she'll, be, she'll end and then it's your turn to present evidence, okay? Okay. okay. Yep. I think if you read the... Um, the ordinance number 20-74, section five, uh, 5.5, I think it's 5-5 loyalty. Each elected tribal official shall avoid conflicts of interest and shall recuse himself or herself from any decision in which he or she has a personal interest that might reasonably be expected to impair his or her objectivity or independence of judgment. There's a whole paragraph there that talks about what is being questioned right now. And, uh, you know, you are right. It's up to us as tribal elected officials to recuse ourselves when we know that there's a conflict of interest. That's why we have this uh, code of ethics, because I think down the road, somebody can say, well, you did not recuse yourself and I could bring something against you for not being fair. So we need to be careful as to how we sit around the circle and not be a part of it. And I wanna to say today that I've always expressed that as a tribal elected official, that if I had anything to do with any kind of issue, I would recuse myself away from the meeting and not sit in the meeting. So today I wanted to say that today, you know, that no matter how you look at this case, it's together, it's together. It started from one complaint, but the complaint is the same thing. So today I wanna to say that um, as elected officials, we need to think about that. That's why we're governed by ethics. So, you know, I just want to say it's in our code here, Your Honor. So I just wanted to say that for the record. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Yes. I would just like to respond that initially when the complaint was accepted, I asked specifically if the complaints were going to be separate. 
And that's why I said it would make a difference if I recuse myself. So to be fair and honest and run a fair, honest trial, I will recuse myself if we're going to accept it as both. Thank you, Councilwoman. <clears throat> um, it, if I didn't make myself clear, I, I see that we have two complaints here. I understand that they stem from a lot of the same incidents, but we have two complaints before the council, two separate people asking for an action by the council. We're hearing them together for purposes of just all of our time. And um, otherwise, I think that we would hear a lot of the same evidence and things like that. So at the end, I think you guys have to make a decision on whether you're going to each separate complaint will have to be voted on separately. We're just running the hearing together for the sake of, I always use the word judicial economy, but that's really what we're doing here. So we're hearing Miss Whiteface's case right now. You'll have to make a decision on that after all the evidence comes in. Then we'll, you'll also have to make a decision on Miss Spotted Bears at the, as well, okay? Yes. So we're going to hear both complaints before we make a decision. We're not going to hear the first one make a decision, hear the second one make a decision. We're going to make a decision based on both. We're going to hear all the evidence and then you will make a decision on each separate complaint. unless the council would like to do it differently. Okay. Councilman, and, uh, okay. Is it Councilman Puyer? Yeah. Correct? Okay. You know, we already started one way. Let's just keep going. Into, I mean, we can't change in the middle of the stream here what we're doing. I mean, that's not right either. So, so if we started one way, let's finish it up one way, whatever way we could do. Because we still have to go into executive session to make these determinations anyway. Thank you, Mr. Puyer. And that's a, or Councilman Puyer, I think that's a very good point. And the council is the sole judge here. You guys are all able to hear the evidence and make the decision because you're the sole judges. And so, we know how this is going to proceed. We've talked about how it's going to proceed. So keep those separate in your mind, okay? Councilman Rodriguez? Yeah, I was just gonna repeat what he said. Okay. I mean, it doesn't make much sense to change the stream of things and how they're going, but I think this should have been addressed in the beginning when we had these questions knowing this is how it was gonna go. So I think we should continue on. So you disagree that we should continue on or? <clears throat> I, I talk quietly, with, I talk loud without a mic and then when I get a mic, I don't talk loud because okay. then I get really loud. So, <laughs> so that's, that's the problem. But uh, um, I agree with, with uh, Councilman Puyer, let's continue. Okay. And uh, Councilwoman Spotterberg can make her own mind up. Thank you. Okay. So. Councilwoman, oh, okay. Do you have a question, Councilwoman? Okay, I think you had one more question, right, Councilwoman? I did. Okay, are you still participating and want to ask your question? Because it is treated separately, I will ask my question regarding this incident specifically. Okay, then we'll come to you, Councilwoman. Okay, go ahead. So my second question is, during listening to the phone call, <clears throat> did you feel there was a threat that your wife, your wife's job could be, there could be complications with your wife's job if you, if you interjected? Yes or no? Yes, that's exactly why I, I didn't speak up or say anything. And at the moment, I did not know what was going on. This is completely a surprise to me. And, and I was unaware to, of what was happening to even make any comments or anything during the call. 
because it was only after the fact, after the call, and I had an opportunity to visit with Wisha, with, you know, to understand what the call was exactly about or what was going on during the call. Because this was all just new to me on that exact call. So I, I had no awareness of what was going on. And yes, as, as a professional, I, I don't believe that, you know, in her work or her and my work that we should get involved in anything like that. Councilman, or Councilwoman Whitehorse. Thank you. Um, Mr. Thomas, did at any time while you were listening to the phone conversation, did you hear specifically um, this white face's position be threatened directly? Not during, no, not during that call. No, and not, not, no. So it was just a feeling you got from the call? Well, the threatening and, and uh, that, that type of speech and the tone, it, it made it, you know, in a threatening way, in a threatening manner. And that was the difference there was the tone, was the tone and the way he approached it. And, you know, yeah, so that, that, that speaks volumes, you know, the way that a, per, a person's, you know, how they interact with another person and their tone and how they speak and all of that definitely anyone to feel threatened by those tones in my per personal opinion okay but specifically her position was not threatened not that i recall during that call thank you mr S or councilman Steele. i'm sorry okay now i'm a i'm going to this question because of what was asked um do you are you well aware of um tribal government our authority as council representatives yes sir i'm well versed in federal indian law and the processes and procedures of different tribes i'm different asking tribes. about our our procedure our our tribal uh, government uh, yes and like i said i'm i'm very aware of the the processes and procedures typically of most tribal so, nations so our federal indian law studies that i've been through throughout my courses of uh of education are you well aware that the Ogallala Sioux tribe lakota housing is a chartered entity Yes, sir. And it being a chartered entity, do you believe the council has the authority to terminate individual employees? Inherently, I believe that council can kind of do what they want collectively. No, I mean, you sound like an educated man. You said you know the process, you know the laws. Can the council go in there and terminate an employee? If the council so chooses, do we have that authority as an individual if councilman? If you so choose as a Hold council on. to terminate an employee or a program or revoke their charter or what have you, council has that authority to do any of that and all of that. So you're saying wait, like, wait, okay, I think we're getting way far out. It, it's it's no, relevant. No, we're getting far out field here. We need to. You can ask questions about what any of the council asked him and limit it only to that we're not talking about what the council can do and can't do that's not relevant to the issues that are before the council today if, so limit your questions otherwise there'll be no more questions okay well julie's question was Sir, was was you have to ask the question or there'll be no more questions okay so so knowing the law knowing the charter knowing the tribal council's authority do we have the authority to fire an individual employee according to their law and their handbook? Okay, he answered that question. If you have another question, you can you can ask it. Otherwise, I didn't, get a, I didn't get an answer. Yes or no? I believe I answered that question. And it was yes. I believe I answered that question. Councilman, yeah. I didn't hear. You. That's why I'm asking him. Yes or no? Well, okay, you're talking over me. No, I'm, I'm asking. And you. I get to. I'm running this. Okay. I told you that we're staying in the realm of what we are here for. And that was her question. That if was you have question. a question that is related to this witness's testimony, you may ask it. Otherwise, we're moving on. Okay. That was her question. Do you have any questions? No, I don't. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> Miss Whiteface, you can call your next witness. Okay. I don't know what I'm going to get to answer them, but 
Okay, so if anybody has any questions for Ms. Whiteface, they may ask them, because you have no more witnesses, correct? No, I just have my statements provided by Jess Porbear and um, Dalbert Brewer. Okay, which has been provided to the council. Yes, they have the statements. You guys have okay. the statements. Those are my witnesses. So if any of the council has questions of Ms. Whiteface, you may ask them now. Go ahead. Councilman Little Hawk Weston. Thank you. Thank you. I guess my question to uh, Ms. Whiteface is, I did read um, Dalbert's uh, statement mm -hmm. and it sounds like in his statement that he felt that he resolved or mm -hmm. he was going to resolve the issue. Yes. And so, you know, I, I guess my question is, uh, is um, Mr. Dal Mr. Brewer, your supervisor? Mm -hmm. So he's the supervisor over you and uh, others in that office. Yeah, me and Jennifer. Okay, so um, so as I read his statement, that's kind of what he had. He felt he resolved the issue mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. And so do you feel like it was resolved in that mm -hmm. office? Um, no, I didn't get a chance to confront this situation. Um, Garfield wouldn't let his girlfriend come in to get confronted to basically say, why did she lie? Because what she got pulled, and that's going to be in her stuff. So, but I never got anything resolved on it. And he did continue to call housing authority up until Friday. It started on Tuesday and he continued the calls all the way till Friday. And I let it go until that last call on Friday. I wasn't, I didn't, wasn't going to file a complaint on him or anything until he kept calling. But, you know, my, another question I have is, you know, you talked about uh, respect mm -hmm. and you talked about how you as a woman, you know, are a very strong leader mm -hmm. and you say that others look up to you. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, um, you know, the issue here is uh, something I really believe that I, uh, that's why I read the supervisor's uh, statement as well as your witness statements. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that um, out of the goodness of your heart, I believe that you do feel that this could have been resolved mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And that it did not have to lead up where it is today because I know you, Weisha, not mm -hmm. personally, but I know who you are. Mm -hmm. I know what family you come from. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that, you know, in your heart, you, you see it that way. Mm -hmm. And I believe that um, when we look at these situations, it really makes it hard as tribal leaders because we have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And I think like the uh, judge said, it's gonna be our decision to make. Mm -hmm. And so I really want to hear uh, you know, just that your answer, you know, that um, if Mr. Brewer did resolve this there or not, because once this is done today and you walk away from here, I'm really hoping whichever way it goes that Mr. Brewer, the supervisor, is going to be able to be your supervisor and be able to protect you and support you in everything that you need to do within your position, mm -hmm. wherever it may be. Mm -hmm. I feel that uh, that's what I see about you, Weisha. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that I believe in your heart that um, you will accept. Cause I don't believe you have a lot of anger mm -hmm. and you don't have hatred in your heart. Mm -hmm. I see that about you. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that to you and thank you for coming forward today. And uh, as a strong Lakota woman, because as a strong Lakota women Sometimes we go through hard things, mm -hmm. even in the circle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as women, we feel it and we see it. Mm -hmm. But I've always believed the same way as you, mm -hmm. to stand strong always and protect myself. And maybe sometimes those are reasons why sometimes we, we feel that we're not being protected. Mm -hmm. But stay, I just want to say, I'm, uh, you know, that I thank you for coming forward and to share this with us. But I know in your heart that you don't have anger and you don't have hate. Mm -hmm. I believe sometimes we, we have to have that in our heart to move yeah. on. 
Yeah. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Anybody else? Councilman Rodriguez. Are we allowed to ask uh, guard questions about this? Not, not till, yet? Not okay. till he presents his side. Because my, um, I believe the director, I wish he was really here to answer some of these uh, questions that are in his statement. Um, because I can't ask her because it won't mean anything. So um, I guess I'll just wait. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Steele, based on Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston's question, do you have any additional questions? Just based on what she asked. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, she made, uh, well, actually, you stated once again that I made these numerous calls and then you cut it down to four calls. Do you answer the phones at the housing? No, you I don't. already answered this. Okay, so who answers the phones? I don't know, Lee Toy, Eagle Bowl? And she told you I've been calling all week? I already told you about this. No, I don't I'm not, know no, why I'm I have to read. Did we she, go did through she this tell again. you that I call every no, day? No, Lee Toy didn't tell me who okay. called, that you called, okay. called there. Right, so thank you. Me. Ms. Whiteface, do you have anything further to say in closing? Um, do I get this opportunity to ask Garth questions? No. At the end? <laughs> At when he... Okay. If you don't have anything further, mm -hmm. you can make a final kind of statement to okay. the council or you can essentially rest and sit down. Okay. Um, I just hope, I just want you guys to know that I am here to work for my people and work for you guys. Um, I don't hold hate in my heart for this man. It's just upsetting that he violated so many women amongst us. And I feel like a lot of women came out to me during this whole process and told me their stories about him. I wasn't going to bring that here because this is my fight too, you know, but I am speaking for them as well and their statements that they have give me. Um, I just want you guys to know too that it was really big of me to ask Garf, and I can't ask him questions, but to say, how can us as Ogallala women help you, help you to stop threatening and intimidating our Ogallala women within our tribe? I want that to be known out there, and that's the kind of woman I am. I don't like to fight. I don't. I just want to work. I just want to work for my people, and I work hard. I do a good job at everything I do. I give it my all, hundred percent having someone over my head coming at me like this, it was really frightening for me. And I have, I'm, I support my family. I'm the only one that supports my family. You know, I have a daughter in college. She's from, she's from Pine Ridge too. And you guys all know her. And I just want to provide for my family. That's all. I don't want to deal with this. I don't want, I don't care about that. You know, I just want to work and that's it. And that kind of behavior makes it hard for women to work like that to think, am I gonna get fired today? Because authority came in and said, basically harassed me. I mean, harassed all, harassed both of us, you know, and I'll keep it separate from hers because these are two different separate issues, but just do what's right and stand behind us, Ogallala women. There's so many people supporting me. I have so much text messages after text messages. My Facebook is flooded, you know, for women proud of me for standing up. And there's a lot of your relatives that have came to me, you know, a lot of your relatives that know they can't just go to you guys to have them protect them. A lot of your relatives have came to me and told me something he had did to them. And they can't just go straight to you guys to tell you. So they said, speak for us too, you know, speak for us. And I got a whole bunch of messages I wish I could show you guys. But thank you, Council, and I appreciate you guys accepting my complaint and hearing my side of the story. And I just hope you guys stand behind Ogallala women who get victimized. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Whiteface. Uh, Ms. Spotted Bear, are you prepared to go forward? Yes. At this point, I will recuse myself. Thank you.
Councilwoman Spotted Bear, will you be coming back then for the vote or are you staying? No. So I will have separate part exit the room. Okay, so you're not returning. Okay. Good afternoon, Council. Um, my name is Jennifer Spotted Bear. Um, I'd like to be addressed as Jennifer, not Jen or Jenny. Uh, um, I want to thank you for accepting my complaint on Mr. Garfield still. Um, you all have copies of the original complaint and I offered you a copy of the um, timeline of where I think the incidents begin. I don't know where this came from, but I gave you the timeline from the day that Monday all the way up till, till today. And also I presented you with a statement from our emergency rental assistance program director um, stating the incidents that had happened and also a statement regarding a phone call that I received from the attorney general's office after the complaint was accepted by the tribal council. So I'm going to go on that I presented you and it's pretty lengthy, but I want you to want everybody to hear the timeline of this. On April 12th, 2021, our new emergency rental assistance program, ERAP, employee Weisha Whiteface came into the office, into the Pine Ridge main office at the housing building to fill out her employment documents for the position we hired her for as the records manager for the Pine Ridge and Rapid City offices. When I walked into the office at 8.20 a.m. that morning, Weisha was getting a briefing from the program director, Delbert Brewer, on the, pro the program director of ERAB. I then got settled in for the day at my desk, then went to the HR to let them know that Weisha was there to fill out her forms. As I come back into the office, Weisha was waiting in the office so, still, so we began talking about the program. I explained to her my position as the EREP coordinator and what we have been doing so far with the program and explaining to her about the district intake clerks and what they've been doing so far with the program and explaining to her about the dish, I'm sorry, what we have been doing with the program so far and to get, um, I'm sorry, I lost my spot. And what they've been doing to get information to the main building. Weisha stated that she apologized, um, but she was gonna be outside for a bit because she was on a Zoom meeting with the marijuana commission that she was just selected for, which was not a problem because uh, she was just getting her documents um, signed for that day. Once Weisha came back into the office, she apologized saying that she didn't think the commission would interfere with her job, which it was not a problem again, um, because this was a different program. During this time of the conversation, Crystal Badwoon came into the office. I introduced Crystal to Weisha, explained to her, to Weisha that Crystal was the intake coordinator who works for, with all the district intake clerks and would most likely be working along with Weisha for record purposes and that Chris, Crystal was a good worker. They said hi to each other and there was no, no further discussion. Then Crystal went into the next office to talk to Carrie. We shall continue to talk about how ha she was happy that she was able to work with us and we talked more on the program. Rachel, who works with the procurement pro office, walked into the office and Delbert walked back, to, walked back in with Rachel, who works with the procurement to, um, Let me start this over. Rachel, who works with the procurement, walked into the office by then. Delbert walked back into in, and Rachel, who works with the procurement, walked into the office <laughs> to, uh, the lighting's so dark here, I'm losing my spot, I'm sorry. So Delbert and Rachel walks into the office, pretty much um, together at the same time. And Delbert asked Rachel to show, um, Weisha how to 
order supplies. She comes back up. Um, she takes her down to the uh, procurement office, shows her how to order the computer phone um, and what she needed for her um, offices or her office here. So then um, Wei Sean, well, and Rachel were downstairs in the procurement office. Um, they get the ordering situated or whatever. Anyways, they, Wei Sean comes up. I take her to show her where to be um, setting up the desk and for her where she's going to be sitting. And I told her it would be by Crystal the, uh, and the file clerk, which are, they have their um, sectionals in their office in the middle of the housing area. And so we just talked about, you know, where she would be, how she would be set up and what she was going to be doing. And it was a pretty small space. So I said, if this don't work out, we'll figure something out. Um, Weisha then left to go do her other business um, after the after she was done signing her documents at the office. That was that for the day. On April 13th, a little after 8 a.m., I was sitting at my desk going through emails. I look up to see Crystal walk in toward my office, which leads to her desk. She had on a spaghetti strap tank top and some trunks on. I motioned to her to come into my office and in the most discreet manner, I did, you know, speak to her and said, we have a dress code here in the housing. Um, you can't wear a spaghetti strap tank top. So I said, do you have a sweater or something you can cover up with? And she just kind of said, oh, gee, I have to go home and change, which um, she didn't do. She went straight to her desk. And she stayed in, her, in the office at her desk until noontime. She went to go, um, she left for lunch. And then she comes back in and she has a t-shirt over her tank, tank top. Around 5 p.m. that day, I mean, that was the only communication I had with Crystal that day. There was no further you know, discussion on anything other than our documents that we processed through her. Um, so around 5 p.m. that day, I was leaving the building just um, getting off of work. And then I received a phone call from Weisha, all distraught. She asked me what I said to Crystal. And so to my confusion, I, I asked, what are you talking about? Weisha states that Garfield messaged her on Facebook to call her. So she called back right away thinking that it had to do something with the commission. So she, she gave him a call back. He immediately starts cussing, telling her, cussing and telling her whatever issue she has with his girlfriend, Crystal, she better drop it because it because she barely got this job and Weisha, um she barely got this job so you know the statement was completely false because then when the conversation never happened i told Weisha i never said anything to Kay, to crystal in that manner i didn't even know there was any kind of issue Weisha said that she she didn't even know crystal Weisha called told me that garfield told her whatever problem she had with Crystal, she better drop it and that she better not call me and tell me and and tell me he called her, which she did Im immediately. And I'm thankful for that. Um, this came out of the blue, which I had no knowledge of any issue. If there was one, because Weisha was working in the Rapid City office on this day, there was no communication or contact between the two on this day um, physically that I know of. April 14th, Delbert and I were sitting in the office on our daily duties um, for the EREP program, which we share an office space. About a little after 10 a.m., John Still, the housing CEO, and Garfield Still, the Wounded Knee District Councilman, walked into my office. Garfield closes the door and states that he comes, he came in to put out a fire and that he isn't here as a councilman, but he on here on behalf of his girlfriend, speaking directly to D Delbert and not looking, speaking towards me, but he didn't ask me to leave the, the room or anything, so I stayed. I immediately knew what he was re referencing to due to the fact that Weisha called me the evening prior about Garfield's call with her. They sat down and Garfield stated that the day prior, Tuesday, April 13th, I called Crystal into my office and said that, said to her that I hope she will, 
there wasn't any issues between her and Weisha prior to working with the emergency rental assistance program. I did not know either Weisha, Crystal, or Crystal personally. I knew Weisha from when our daughters played basketball together or against each other. Um, I knew Crystal from when I were, was a secretary and she would bring documents in to me to sign. Uh, and that's the only, you know, only time I, I knew of her. And Garfield, he's acquaintances with my spouse. Um, he, he's known him for quite some years, but I never knew him personally. So I don't know uh, how this all came about. So once Garfield started saying that I called Crystal into my office, I asked him, asked if her, um, to ask if she had any issues with Weisha. I had to interview by asking if I could speak because Weisha called me and told me um, what he was saying to her. He held his hand up to me. And then this is his persona when he walks in. He comes in the office behind John Still. John Still sits down on the chair in front of my desk and he sits across from me at the window. He walks in and he's pulling his shirt like he's buttoning it up. And I come here to put out a fire. You know, to me, that's intimidating because knowing the situation that he's, whatever he's staring up between Weisha and I, and he comes in here and sits there and he knows that this is towards me, but he's staring at Delbert and he motions to me when he's talking about me. I never in my life had to defend myself against the man. And yes, I did post about this. I did say I'm going to take it as far as I can because I never had to defend myself. And I shouldn't be standing here in front of you all because I'm in mourning. I just lost my mom. He knows that. And to come at me with some childish, irrelevant BS like this at my workplace. If he had an issue with me, he should have contacted me. I don't know this man. I don't know him personally. But I will not stand down to a man. I will not stand down to no bully. And no councilman can stand here and tell me to shut up and be quiet. You're not going to sit here and tell me not to speak my truth. I don't care who you are. If this is going to be lead up to me losing my job, so be it. I'm going to stand here and represent myself as a woman, as a mother, as an auntie. For all those women out there that messaged me as well. I have messages after messages on Facebook thanking me for doing this. He intimidates so many women. How come there's no men out there saying that he's doing this to them? How come there's no men filing complaints on him? He does this to women. And I will not stand for that. And I have a recording. Once I felt that he was threatening, intimidating me, or intimidating towards me, once he wouldn't let me speak for myself, I took my phone and I pressed record. And I recorded the rest of that conversation. And I'll play it for you guys, if it's allowable. This is your opportunity. So go ahead, Ms. Spotted Bear. And just for clarification, when was this conversation? This conversation, this was during when he came into my office on the third, the 14th. Okay. When he came into my office and wanting to put out a fire, whatever that may be. Because of my woman very high job, I don't want no part of it. And when the new school hired her, she's going to start working a phone as a teacher, and I'm glad because that's my area on the no they won't politically attack her there. But, and I mean, I told her today, if we have to, we'll walk. Just 
away from that job because I don't want her feeling like she's attacked or you know politics or whatever. You know she I don't she don't involve me in her work and I don't try to involve myself in her work and I'm really supportive of, of you guys being in these positions because I'll be honest there are counselors that don't agree with the matter shit but I say let them do their job. We hired them to do the job. Let them fucking do their job. And that, that's where I'm at today. Is this? I, I don't want to. I don't want her being politically attacked over me. She's quiet. She, she, she's not even a politician. So that's where so I'm can at. Can I tell today. you where I don't know where this came from? Because I honestly, I was telling Delbert this morning because Weisha called me upset and she was like, "What did did you say anything to her?" And I said, "Geez, I said I we don't even talk. She does her job. You know, only thing we communicate on is the the jobs that we're doing." So the only thing that she came in this yesterday morning, she had a spaghetti strap tank top on. So I said, I kind of motioned her in and I said, there's a, a dress code here. I said, can, do you have a sweater or something you can cover up with? I said, because wear the, that spaghetti top. And she just said, oh, okay, well, I have to go home. That's the only thing that I said to her yesterday. And she went and went on with her job. Well, apparently it was after you and Lisa went somewhere and came back and no, yeah, Rachel wasn't even here yesterday. Um, we hired her the day before on well, Monday. The day before. Yeah. On Monday, she came in here. We interviewed her. You know, she spent most of her time with him, yeah, yeah, and then we yesterday. were showing her the process of you know what, where to order stuff and who do we talk to. Then she did her um, application, her documents with the HR, and she was in here. We talked about the commission, how she said she had to. She just got hired on and. She was hoping that, you know, it wouldn't interfere. She's telling us that she don't think it'll interfere with, you know, the job that she's doing up there and for us. So that that was our conversation was on that commission. So I don't know. There's nowhere. Did your name pop up? The only, and see, I was telling Deborah, I said, I didn't even know she was your girlfriend when we hired her. And she walked, when she, remember she sat here and she said, I did yeah. Garfield still. So that's well, how that's we knew. Why she lived out and they asked her why she lived out in Madison. She said, I'm with Garfield. Yeah. yeah. She didn't just say, oh, I'm Garfield's girlfriend. No. Like, no. Yeah, it was in the job, question. You know? Yeah. Like it was getting her a job. That's, that's yeah, not the that other And that's, that's that was after, after the fact. We already that's hired her. It's not like she was just yeah. getting her a job. It was never a factor mm -hmm. about her real personal life. Uh, I just, I just and we hired her mom. based on yeah. her, her resume and how, you know, her application. There was nothing. So we we'll hired her. We did. She and uh, Jennifer and I. So what, what's this deal between Weisha and there's no that's a mystery yeah. to me because she just came in Monday. Yeah, and I went to her house. She didn't even know her. Yeah. My girlfriend don't even know her. So that's where that's where the big mystery or confusion is because there was no mention of you at all. I and don't I, know, but I had no idea that I mean if there was anything and I and I said, Do you have any issues with Garfield? She was with um, his girlfriend, and she said, I don't even know her, and I don't even know your girlfriend. And see, that's and what I, I'm saying. Yeah. I don't even have a fucking problem with nobody, and I'm trying not to have a problem with no one. Yeah. Because she problems so, just pop up like that for me. I'm like the most targeted politician on this council, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so when I'm trying, what I keep telling you, you know, my whole focus is this position here, getting this job done. I don't, I'm not here to make friends and be, you know, I want to get I this job that done. She's He's after work sometimes doing her damn job. She's a good worker, yeah. Yeah, and, I, and, and, and and she likes this job. But with these comments being made, she feels targeted. And I said, "What? Well, let me try to talk to somebody because I don't want no problem. Yeah. I don't even want to be involved." Right? Yeah. And they gave me. I mean, they they told me there was um, comments from out there, so we addressed that and as soon as it happened. Today, Garland and her to bully him. That's going to be the talk, you know, and then yeah. all I'm asking is that we put out this damn fire because yeah. I don't want no problem. But, and I told her if we have to, then we'll just walk from that job because this is the first time I've heard that there was a fire, mm -hmm. you know. So what you just said about Weisha and her, her husband or whatever, I have yeah, not a clue what's then. going on there. He called me this morning today and I was like, hey man. I just called your girlfriend and say, I don't know what the hell's going on, man. Yeah, and we don't either. I mean, this is all news to me. Well, maybe you don't, but maybe yeah. you know some. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't know what's going on. And exactly what I told you. She walked in that door. All I said was, you know, there's a dress code. 
and I, you know, I've addressed her with her. She's yeah, not. I think she would like yeah. me. I'm just saying, whatever. I know. mean, can can we bring her? Do you feel comfortable bringing her no, in I here? I don't because she don't. She, because she I don't feel like I don't even know why it would be said. Like you're assuming that I'm the one pushing all of this. I would not even well, start a fire that nothing. It is. I want it to end right now because I don't want to be involved. Well, I would like it to end because she's a good worker for us. She and she does a good job at what she's doing. That's why she's not even saying nothing. She's not saying nothing because she don't want a problem. So yeah, I don't I, know I, why I don't. it would come down to me saying something because I'm trying to make this position, this whole program successful. So we're trying to, you know, work, have a good working relationship with everybody. Okay, so... If I leave off the store, I mean, that's it. I don't want, I mean, yeah. I support you guys 100%. I do. I support Uncle John. I support you. I support Ramon. We, 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 we don't have no problems you know. with Crystal. She's a good worker. Yeah, and I'm sure. And if there's things going on between her and some of their employees, we don't even know about it. She don't even, she, it's crazy because she's real quiet and she you know, does her own thing. And, and it's these, these women that sit in here making the snipe comments about yeah. You know, the councilman and this and that, you know. Yeah. I mean, her sister's a councilman. Yeah. You know, and then people saying, how's the council here and stuff? I mean, can't just assume it's her because yeah. of me right away, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, we, you know, we hired her because of her, her application. She showed that she had credentials to do this job and she's doing a good job. There's no problems up there. Yeah, well, I don't want her to sit in here. It's just this internal long. bickering that goes on all the time. And sometimes we don't even know about it until, you know, somebody brings it up, so. Yeah, like, and what, I, I kind of went to bed and left it alone. Yeah. But when I woke up, this guy threatened to kick my ass or whatever. I kind of sparked it up again, you know. Yeah. Damn, yeah, I told him, wherever you want to be, I'll go, I'll go to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to Aisha and find out. If I don't even want, no one talking to no one. Yeah. And I just wanted to end, you know. I told yeah. Aisha yesterday, don't talk to no one, just let it go. I mean, I just wanted to tell her, I don't have no problem with you, I don't even know you. Yeah. And then for some reason, she calls Jan. So see, that shit has to end from yeah. when I walk out. I hope it just ends. Well, you know, you know I, I'm kind of grateful she told me because I had, like, you would come in here and throw all this on us and I not know nothing about it. I, mean, I wouldn't even came in here if I didn't yeah. give no damn call this morning. Yeah. Know? So, you know, and that would have been just... That's why I said I went to sleep with this shit behind me. Because mm -hmm. that's how I do I, In order for me to move forward, I got to put shit behind me and then get up to this thread and call and like, fuck this, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I just wanted to let you guys know that, you know, whatever, whatever, I, I hope it ends because yeah. I could easily just tell her to quit and then, then there'll be no problem with me, yeah. you know. There's not a problem with me, you know, her working here. She's a good worker. And yeah, I know, but I'm going to keep it that way. Not you, maybe not you, are you, but somebody. Yeah, you know? yeah it's it's something going on out there that we're unaware of. Okay? Yeah, she's why she doesn't bother yeah. anybody. Yeah. yeah, and I, you know, I, like, like you said, she told told you I called her in here. I never called her in here for anything. Uh, I, like I said, I'm not going to even push that further. I just wanted to end, you know. Okay. Well, as far as we're concerned, it's ended, and there won't be any issues with it. Okay. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to come in here and pull my way or whatever. I I just want to end. I I don't want no smoke, you know. Yes. Yeah. I, I got more shit to worry about. Yeah. And and yes. Yeah, we do too. We don't like to see these employees bickering. Yeah. Because we just want to see them produce. Because, like Jennifer says, we got a big program that we're administering. To. We need good workers, and she's a good worker, and we look forward to her. And she's got a critical position, too, because she's right and heard on all those. Uh, yeah, she's in a supervisor uh, position. So we had a big meeting this morning, and we acknowledged her as a good worker and a good supervisor, and right and heard on all those other people. So we have no intentions of. Uh, you know any adverse things but sometimes you don't even know these things are going on behind the scenes yeah, i mean like for me it's like yeah. just because people have political issues with me then it, i don't i should rub off on her you know? yeah no well we'll do everything we can to keep i, I appreciate it like i said i'm not trying to start nothing or okay. pulling my way around and make, i'm not even trying to do that i'm just trying to put a fire on it right. you know from in a bigger issue. Well, it might be smoldering, so it's out now. Okay, I appreciate that. Okay, right. Thank you. thanks for stopping <laughs> out. Okay.
So that was with his intentions. He knew you came in there with bullying intentions, just completely continuously stating that that he didn't come in here to be a bully, but he knew what he was coming for. So, so once Garfield left, I did feel overwhelmed and I did make a post on Facebook stating that I was, you know, going to fight this to the end because I did feel intimidated. I feel, did feel threatened by this man. Like I said, I, I don't ever have, have to defend myself against a man. I have a spouse that takes care of me and my family. I have six children that I care for. I don't have time for this little childish bickering, whatever it is he's doing. He can't even sit in here and hear all of these testimonies. Once we're up here speaking the truth, he walks out. What's he going to come in here and question us up with irrelevant questions? He should be in here listening to all of this. So on April 15th, I, as I sat in Del the office with Delbert as our usual morning briefing for the program, Delbert receives a phone call and he looks at it and he says, this is Garfield still. And he like he always answers, he just answers on speaker. And I was sitting there and Garfield, you know, mentioned to him, I thought the fire was out when I walked out that door. Now there's a post that, uh, about me stating that they're coming to get me and take me all the way. I thought we dealt with this and it was over. And he, he told Dalbert and his, the, his demeanor, talent, the way he talks, you know, you should, uh, he said, all I want from you, Dalbert, is the truth. I want you to come with the, what is your truth? I already, you heard everything. So he spoke with Delbert briefly and Delbert, you know, of course he said, yeah, that's all I'm about is the truth. I will speak the truth if it comes down to it. And I told Delbert from the day I told him I was going to file this complaint that I was not going to bring him into it. All I ask is for his statement. And I, this is between him and I, because he came at my office to me. He addressing me, this whole issue, he's putting me in the middle of it, whatever it is that he has against me. So on April 27th, I filed a complaint against Garfield still for his misconduct and threatening, intimidating manner on how he came into my office, accusing me of false accusations. The OST Tribal Council accepted the complaint as well as Weisha's complaint on the same issue against Garfield. Immediately after, because I went home for lunch to hear the outcome of the complaints. And then I, so I took a late lunch. I went home, went back to the office. It was about 2.30 or so, I can't remember exact time, but as soon as I came to my office, I sat down and my phone rang on my desk and it, some lady said, is this Jennifer? I said, yes. And she said, well, I'm calling to um, follow up on your um, report on Garfield Still. So I said, wait a minute, what is this about? And she said, I, I'm calling from the attorney general's office. So and well, let me back up a little bit because after that day, Garfield left and I, I did, I was upset. I went home and I told Albert, I'm leaving for the day. I said, I didn't, I've never felt this way. And so I went home, I, I talked to my spouse, told him what happened and I started crying. I was upset. So he said, call the cops, make a report. I did. I called the cops and I made the report and I told the cops I had this recording of him coming into our office immediately and so on that phone call that he made with delbert he knew about that report that the cops are called immediately i don't know how he found out but he knew so then back up to that day the complaint was accepted by the council whenever i i got that phone call from the attorney general's office i asked them to call me on my personal phone because this sounds like a personal issue and I knew what it was about. So I went and gave him my cell phone number and I walked out of the building to answer the phone call. And it was a quite lengthy phone call because um, I was questioning them that the lady up asking her, you know, who are you? Why are you calling me? How do you know this um, about this report? Who called you asking? Because she stated that 
the attorney general told her to follow up on this specific report because a female called him wanting that document and wanting that recording. So I don't know who this female is that called. And I asked, I said, is this normal practice that you do? Is this what you do with every com every report? Do you follow up on every report like this? And she said, no, it's only for whenever it comes up on the council. So I asked this lady's name. She was a uh, Loopy Hudspeth. She stated um, she was the attorney general's um, assistant. So I asked, told her, I said, she said, are you going to continue to file the report and um, file a complaint on or press charges on her field? And I said, you know what? I know the process. You're going to talk me into filing a, a complaint or a file charges on Garfield and that's going to stop the hearing process and I won't be able to make the hearing. I said, but I want this documented and I want it stated that, you know, you called me and requested this. So I don't know if they did or not, but that was what I asked of them. Um, so when, in conclusion with that phone call, I said, you know, this is my documentation. I'm going to write a statement after this I'm, once we hang up and I'm going to present it to the council as well. So you got that statement that I presented to you regarding that conversation on April 27th. Between April 15th and May 4th, Garfield had made numerous Facebook posts. I mean, I was blasted on Facebook for posting about mur missing and murdered indigenous women. And Garfield, was um, posting about it, about me using it for political reasons. I have no political gain in this whatsoever. This is my livelihood. If I have to protect myself, yeah, I'm going to advocate for MMIW. I've done it for many years before this. I've posted about it. And for some, some reason, it's I, I'm in this situation where I can advocate again. I'm going to speak my mind. I'm going to tell how I feel. You can't tell me that I can't feel this way when you're a man and you come at a woman intimidating, threatening, making false accusations. Why? What did I do to you? What do you want from me? Garfield, what do you want from me? Why did you come after my job? Why did you come at me? Why are you picking on me and Weisha? What did we do to you? All we want to do is work. We got this job. I was excited. I lost my mother. And once I started this job, it kept me busy. It kept my mind busy. Help me, you know, keep focused on something. I took, take pride in my work. I love this program because we're helping the people. We're helping outside of our own reservation. And somehow all these politics are nitpicking at us. But I'm just, and I told my director, I said, I'm just going to continue to do what I'm doing until they tell me that I'm fired. Because I like to do what I'm doing. I love helping the people. I love getting, you know, getting it out there. I get cussed up by people because like, they, their council rep are telling them to call me and ask me what's going on. But I take it. And I shouldn't even be standing up here in front of the, you, anybody, not even in front of the public speaking, you know, I'm a traditional woman. I'm a Lakota woman. I carry myself in a humble, respectful manner. I take pride in who I am as a mother. You look at my children, you see how beautiful they are. That's because I make them that way. They're respectful and humble children as well. I have every right to stand up here and defend myself because whatever is going on here inside this circle or in his own agenda, it has nothing to do with me, but I'm getting attacked. It has nothing to do with me, but somehow I'm being pulled back politically and being chastised on Facebook from May, April 15th or April 12th to up to today, 
I've been screenshotting all his posts, all po poking jabs at us because we filed a complaint on him. And you can sit there and shake your head and say, no, it's not, but it is. It, once we posted about MMIW, then he had another former council rep sharing it and chastising us as well. So you have all your evidence. You have all the Facebook posts that I shared with you. You have, you know, everything that I know the truth from my heart, from what's really going on. I prayed about this. I, you know, my family are, you know, we're very humble people. We keep to ourselves. We don't go out and starting trouble. We don't go out trying to get involved in anyone's business. We don't, we stay to ourselves. We shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to be up here doing this. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing to have to speak on this issue because it's not even nothing. I don't know where it came from. I'm good to everybody that comes across my path. I treat Crystal good. Crystal's a good person. I work, I, when I hired her, she had a good personality. I, you know, I fed off of that. She's a good person. I did never, never made her feel uncomfortable. Even after all your accusations, after all of the, you coming in and threatening, intimidating me in my office, I never disrespected her. I never treated her any different. We still had a working relationship. I still respected her as an employee because that's how professionals work. We don't sit there and pick and be little people. So in conclusion, originally in my original complaint, I asked for a public apology, but this is beyond that. From all of the antagonizing of this, from continuing, you know, rallying people up against us, you know, people making accusations towards us without even knowing who we are. I would like to ask for an impeachment. You know, I prayed, I pray for Phil because, you know, this is a hard position that he put himself in. I pray for his community because I know a lot of people from his community. I respect a lot of people from that community. And there are people that, you know, he does do good out there. That community does look up to him and respects him in that manner. They put a headdress on him. That's how much they respect him. So he should respect them as enough to continue that on and carry himself in a, in a better manner. Quit chastising, quit picking on women, quit bullying women. And like Weisha, you know, I, how can we help? How can we start a program for, to help, help you fix what you're doing? This isn't, you're not the only one. There are other out there who, who probably need this help as well. There are probably, there's narcissists out there who don't know what they're, they don't see their, their wrongs. They don't see that pe people are hurt of them because of their, their attitude and behavior and mentality towards them. There are many women out there who are reaching out and asking us, please stand up and speak. Stand up and stand, speak for us on our behalf because we're scared. There shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that way. You know, reading those messages made me cry. Reading those messages made me feel like, you know, so brokenhearted that our women are that hurt across our reservation. And yet here we do, here we are still continuing to enable this behavior And I ask and I prayed that whatever comes out of this, you know, so be it, whatever you guys decide to do, I'll, I'll, I'll take it, I'll accept it, and I'll live with it. But at least I got my, myself, my story out there, my truth. At least I got 
to stand up and speak on my behalf because I will not back down to a man and I will not allow my family to get involved in this. I'll stand here by myself until the end of it because I, I, I've been raised as a strong Lakota woman. I don't need anybody to back me up. Is that all, Ms. Spotted Bear? Yeah, if, if you have any questions. Okay. Councilman Steele, do you have questions about her statement? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> at any time in, in our, our discussions with Dalbert, yourself, myself, Mr. Steele, did, did I ever um, request that you be terminated? No, you didn't. Okay. Um, and in your, your statement here, um, you said you don't know we are or myself or my girlfriend personally. Right. And you don't have no personal ties with any of them. Right. So <clears throat> you don't know me personally either. I know you from working from Nacha, your relationship that you had with him as, you know, friends or whatever, and then working with you. I don't know you personally. I don't have no personal relationship with you. Okay. So <clears throat> in your statement here, um, when you start off, it was basically a, a, a call from Weisha, is that correct? Correct. And everything Weisha told you, um, it was a, it, it's kind of like a third party story, right? That you put in your statement, it came from Weisha. So you weren't present around me or Weisha's phone call. So you don't know anything that was said with me and Weisha? Correct. Okay, so it was just what Weisha told you was was pretty what much. What I put in the statement, yeah. correct. So whatever Weisha told you on the phone calls, what you know, it's not, you didn't hear any of it personally. Correct. I was not in the place where you or Weisha placed the phone call. Okay. Um, so on, on, on Tuesday, April 13th, at any time did you bring Crystal in to say, is there going to be any problems with you and Weisha because of what's going on with Garf and Weisha? On Tuesday, April 13th, the only communication I had with Crystal was the AM when she walked into the office for work. She had a spaghetti strap tank top on and cut off. But um, I asked her if she can has anything to cover up her tank top at least because there's a dress code that is the only communication or personal contact I've had with Crystal that day. So uh, at any time did you ask her that question? Negative. Okay. Um, I ain't got no more questions. Does the council have any questions right now of Miss Spotted Bear or would they rather wait till the end like we did with Miss um, Whiteface? Okay, let's proceed with your witnesses. Mm -hmm. um, can you first tell me what, because you've given me a list of like seven witnesses. Can you tell me what they're going to be testifying to? Okay, I'm just going to keep it to my spouse who is here with, um, here, um, and then Helene and Gaddy, they're relevant to the situation. Okay, thank you for that. So your spouse, what is his name? Not Char Charging Crow. Okay. And it's my understanding that he was outside listening even after I admonished everybody not to be listening to the testimony. Um, so he's not allowed to come in. Well, I think we will hear his testimony, but the council will take that into consideration when they make their decision. Correct. Okay. So you're just going to have Naka and Nacha. Nacha. I'm very sorry. Um, and Helen. Yes. Okay. The rest of your witnesses, you're not going to use. 
Correct. Okay. So let's proceed forward with your witnesses. Okay. Mr. Charging Crow, can you please state your name? First name is Nacha, last name Charging Crow, and I represent the Pine Ridge Village, Pine Ridge people. Okay, thank you. And we're here today um, on a complaint filed by Ms. Spotted Bear. Um, the council is to determine the truth, so they are asking that you provide them with the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, okay? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and um, just for the record, uh, Mr. or Councilman Steele excused himself. He said that he has no questions for this witness or the next witness. So go ahead and proceed. Did you say he excused himself? For right now. For but now. Please proceed. Okay. Good afternoon or late evening, whatever it is, Council. Um, my name is not Sean Charging Crow. Um, I'm here to speak, um, you know, more of a, a witness on behalf of my other half, you know, Jennifer Spotted Bear. Um, you know, I just remember, you know, I just got off uh, work, I was night shift, and, you know, I was still in bed, and I woke up to some sniffling, you know, and, uh, you know, she was, she was crying. I didn't know what was going on. Um, you know, usually, you know, it's sad news, you know, maybe relative passed on or whatever. So I got up out of the bed and uh, tried to figure out what's going on. And, you know, as soon as uh, she started, she just pressed, pressed play on her, uh, on her phone. You know, she had a recording. And I was listening to that recording and, you know, growing, growing up around, you know, Garf Steele, you know, I know him on a personal level. Uh, he, was one of, he was one of, you know, good bros, you know, and grew up around him. And I knew it was his voice. I, I mean, we, you know, he has a, he has a powerful voice. So I knew that was him already. She didn't have to mention his name. And, um, I start listening and then I start to get angry, you know, because she was really talking to her like she's a man. And I was like, really, you know, dumbfounded because I was like, man, you know, this, this guy's a leader for our, for our people. And he's talking like this to our, our females. And, you know, us growing up, you know, spiritually and through our way of life. I mean, we all have an understanding that, you know, we don't we don't talk to our our female relatives in that manner. And him being, you know, a, a close, bro, a close bro to me, you know, I was thinking, why, why would he come at my my spouse like that, you know? And and you know, if he had an issue or a problem, and then him stating on there that, you know, I'm not here as a council member, but we all know that he is a council member. I mean, you, you, you we all know who you are, and this job is 24/7. So no matter where you go, especially when you're on the on our tribal grounds, you are a representation of that council member. So he, he states that right away on there, you know, and, and, and if he had that kind of an issue, you know, he should have left it up, you know, to his whatever had happened. You know, I didn't, I didn't get involved. I didn't want to get involved. Um, I immediately called for an officer to come to our house, you know, because I didn't want no problems. And I, I can understand, you know, how, 
how fast this all could, you know, turn into something physical and families get involved and pretty soon it, 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 it turns into a war. And, 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 and I didn't want it to, to come like that. And I wanted everything to be handled in, in a legal way. And, you know, she just lost her mother and I know she's still grieving from that. And, you know, it was, it was real difficult for me and especially the job title and, and duties that I carry. And, and, you know, so an officer come and, and, and she didn't want to, you know, pursue any, any charges on him. She just wanted it documented. She just wanted it documented. So, you know, and so she documented it and whatnot. And, um, and from there, uh, man, it just started with all the, the Facebook, social media nonsense. And I understand, you know, you can say whatever you want to say on that social media. But it was so quick for him to, you know, start. You know, I, I know names weren't mentioned, but he knows who he was talking about. I mean, and people, you know, around him knew who he was talking about. And, you know, it's just real sad. It's real sad that we're even at this point. You know, it, it shouldn't have gone this far, but it, but it's here. It's here. And one thing that, you know, I just want to mention on behalf of my spouse and, and, and the other female is that they're not here representing their job. They're here because they're victims. They're victims of some bullying, some intimidation tactics, you know, all them kind of things. And we can minimize his behavior all we need to and want to, but we know what's happening here. And, you know, I, I, I've seen a lot of his posts and he's, he's saying, you know, I hope the truth comes out. And I do too. I really do too. And I hope he's held accountable for his actions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Charging Crow. Does any member of the council have any questions for this witness? Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Ms. Spotted Bear, you can call your next witness. She may have left. She said she had to leave at three, so I don't know. Okay. We'll see if she's still there. Yeah, we can continue on. Okay. Then you have no other witnesses? No. Okay. Members of the council, do you have question, questions for Ms. Spotted Bear? Go ahead, Councilman Yellowboy. Thank you, Your Honor. Jennifer, um, is it just that you have the one recording that is referred to as the one you just played, or is there, is there a second Correct, recording? Correct, that's the one recording I have. Thank you. Anyone else have questions? In the recording, is he, who else is he talking to? He was mostly talking to Delbert. And then John still was in there as well, sitting in front of my desk. Okay. Miss Spotted Bear, just for clarification, you said in your, and you kind of noted this, that in your original complaint, you were asking for a public apology, but now you're asking for impeachment, correct? correct. Okay. And for cause or a violation of an ethical for violation of an ethical okay and what um what specifically what ethical um standard are you alleging he violated intimidation threatening bullying harassing on social media
anyone else have any other questions? Go ahead, Councilwoman Whitehorse. According to 2074, the um, the closest violation that you're discussing is um, section 5-10, which says, um, an elected tribal official shall not threaten or intimidate an official or any employee employee of the tribe in retaliation or reprisal for any lawful action taken by the official or employee in performance of his or her official duties. Is that what you're trying Correct. to fall under? So is, is that stated specifically on any of the statements? Because it wasn't in the recording. On any of the statements? No, it's not. I I spoke uh, directly stated it here tonight. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, I saw Councilwoman Sears's hand first, so I'll go to her and then you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, was you given any kind of um, copies of this, what is it, 2074 ordinance of the ethics code? Were yes. you able to get a copy and review it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Councilman Carlo. You know, I, I come from a family of mostly women and uh, it's sad that we're here today, but I do feel that this should have been handled internally by the CEOs or whoever, and it should have never even got to this point. I mean, strange as it may be, the people that we have entrusted to run tribal chartered program should have been the officials that said, okay, you presented something to us, we will handle it from here. It should have been handled internally. I don't think it should have even got to the point where Garfield was able to address anybody there. You know, it, it's just that maybe it's a new situation that involved them too, but I can't believe that when you're getting paid $100 an hour, you wouldn't know how to handle a problem that should have been internally. It, it's something that over a course of somebody's 40 year work history, you know, he should have been able to say, we will take it from here and this will be dealt with internally. It's just, it shouldn't even got to this point. I believe yeah, if, if those individuals knew what they were doing out there in their positions, and that's my comment. Thank you, Councilman Carlo. Um, anybody else have any questions? May I comment on that? Yes, you may. And you may um, also give your concluding remarks okay. if you have any. So with this situation that um, accusingly um, happened, uh, my whole idea was if she had an issue with something that supposedly was said to her by me, she should have went to the director and addressed it with him. Then he could have addressed it with me. It could have been dealt that way. He, if he, she went to him, he should have encouraged her to go to the director not come directly at us. That's where he came, came in fault and used his title and his position. It's like me sending my spouse into, you know, a business place and coming at
as somebody else. I, I would never do that. Yes, Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston. Thank you, Your Honor. My question to Jennifer is, um, I wanted to ask you, are you Ms. Badwood's supervisor? Well, Delbert is the supervisor over all the employees, but in his absence, I am next one in line. Okay, but you're, uh, you're not directly not supervisor directly over supervisor. her. No. And uh, second question, the morning that happened, was Dalbert there at the moment or the current time when you address Miss Badwoon? About her clothing? Yeah. No, it was just myself in the office and she was walking towards my office that leads to her desk. Okay. So like I said, it was very discreetly. There was nobody around to shame her out because that was not my intention. Okay, thank you. Yes, Councilman Watkins. Now this this for you, Jennifer. Um, reading the, all the witnesses and listening to you guys, and um, this is not sticking up for Mr. Steele, but you guys said you felt intimidated. Did you? Um, and this is all the women. Did you guys feel the same way when? A female councilwoman comes in there. Do you feel that intimidation? Correct. Because they're being counsel. If they came, in, if it was a female that came in and not him, it would. I would still do the same thing because you're using your title. You're using your position to come at come at me with the false accusations. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything further from anyone? Yes, Councilwoman Sears. Yeah, um, listening to the recording that you did have in there, you know, the, the comment that uh, Mr. Still had made um, stating that you said on the recording that you don't want, that he didn't want to have to come back if and get involved. Correct. You know, did that make you feel exactly. any way? Exactly. That's that's exactly why what made me upset was that, you know, is he coming back after me? Is he does he want my job? You know, is he trying to get me removed from my position? I had no idea. You know, this is just out of the blue coming at me. So I felt like I was I, I couldn't think of what it could be. You know, it's confusing them where this came from. So, yeah, I did. That's exactly how I felt. That's why I went home and, you know, we contacted the police. Thank you. Anything further? Cloud Bear, do you have anything further to say? I feel um, relieved to get it off my chest and get it all out there because I feel like um, from the time it began, I, I start building up anger, which I, I don't carry with me. You know, I try to be a good relative to everybody and try to treat others the, the way they, that I want to be treated. You know, so I, I really, you know, I thank you all for hearing me out and allowing me this time to speak my truth. Thank you. Councilman Steele, uh, it's now your opportunity to present your side of um, this case. And I think you should go up to the podium okay. since we're on Zoom, if you would. Do you need Of 
I don't believe that Councilman Steele has any statements. I have not been given a copy of any statement. Uh, both of you, I will give an opportunity to ask any questions of Mr. Steele after he has given his statement. <clears throat> Good afternoon. You know, it's kind of kind of hard to it's kind of hard to put it into pieces and start off. Um, you know, prior to, uh, prior to, prior to coming, you know, I did consult, I did consult some, some advice from, from elders and, and, uh, uh a well-respected female that, uh, that I, 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 I turned to in, in times and, You know, it, it is hard to, it is hard to, uh, to be a man these days. It really is hard. And all I have is my, my word. And what I see is the truth. And that's all I can walk with. And that's all they told me. The only advice I got from these older relatives was to just walk with the truth and that's all I'm going to do. You know, when, when my girlfriend told me about, told me about, uh, the statement that was made about, um, you know, whatever was going on with her and wish I wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, affect her work you know i uh i had no intentions of i really had no intentions of of threatening anyone i mean for the last man for the last 16 years of my life in politics i've been a target no matter what i do even in this administration I'm the one targeted no matter what. And I'll probably continue to be targeted for the rest of my life. No matter what. And that's hard for me. You guys think I, I don't have emotion, that I don't have feeling? Well, I do. No, I raise eight kids myself without their mothers. And that's tough being a dad because I have to love my kids and I have to discipline them because they don't have a motherly love. You know, this day and age, it really is hard to be a man. It really is because we're in the eye of everybody. We can't have feelings. We have to be the rock, but we fall too. We hurt too, just like women. We really do. And so the truth of everything, and this is all I have is the truth, and I, that's how I say this. I even went as far as asking this medicine man, should I go with a Chanupa to hold it? And he said, no, you don't want your Chanupa on a political arena. Just take a feather and walk with the truth. And the truth of the matter is, and I'm not, and I'm not saying this in a mean way, but the call to Weisha from their statements is a lie. The whole thing's a lie. I never raised my voice to her. Never did. I never threatened her in any kind of way. All I tried to do was prevent is what's going on here today. I didn't want to be here in front of you guys worrying about my job. I didn't. So I tried to prevent this. And I'll, and I'll be honest, 
my honest mistake was not going to Jen first because I know Jen at that level. I called her sister. I dressed her as sister. I did give her hugs when I saw her. Some years back, and Jen knows this, made a Facebook post about being a single mother, no job, and she was having a hard time. So I, I asked her if she wanted to work because I could get her a job. And so I asked Mr. Big Crow if we could bring her on to work because, you know, I didn't, I didn't like, you know, the thought of her having to struggle with her kids. So we did. I brought Jen in, told her, told her. When she was working in our office, we talked every day. We had good conversations. I helped her. I, I, I helped her write her letter for to run for secretary. I even helped her pay her background check. So she could be the secretary. I lobbied council reps to vote for her because she is a good person. I did that to help her out. And that's why I said my biggest regret was not going to Mrs. Spotted Bear first. Because all I tried to do, and, all, and it's all in honesty, all I tried to do was stop this from being here. And so that's why I said, put this fire out. So when I called Mrs. Whiteface, I said, hey, Weisha, I don't know you. I don't talk to you. I said, and, and this is what's going on. This is what was stated by Mrs. Spotted Bear. And I told her what they told me. And so I said, whatever's going on, I don't want no problem with nobody. I just want it to end. She said, oh, my God, Jen said that? I said, yeah, Jen said that. And she said, the only thing we said when we went for a drive was that that was your girlfriend. And that <clears throat> when they hired her, she said, oh, I'm Garfield Steele's girlfriend. That's what Aisha told me on the phone. And she said, um, and I told Jen, the only time I ever met your girlfriend was in Deadwood when I saw her. That's what she told me on the phone. And that was pretty much it. And I said, well, whatever's going on, Weisha, I don't want it to go any further. I don't want it to go any further than this. So just, and then she said, should I call Jen after? And I said, no, don't, don't call Jen. Just let it go. Just end it. That's all I asked. I said, just let it go. Just end it. I didn't want it to go any further. I just wanted that to stop there. But no, she called Jen, and I don't know what she stated to Jen. I don't know. Nope. And I'm not going to uh, and make assumptions of what I know. But whatever she said to Jen, you know, must have upset her. So my biggest mistake was not going to Mrs. Spotted Bear, and I regret that. Because I think it wouldn't have been here if I'd done that. Because everything that Mrs. Whiteface stated has been a total lie. Never hollered at her. When I address women, I was told not to look in their eyes because that alone it tells, it shows that you're intimidating to a female. So I never look at a female in the eye. And so maybe this issue with me and Jen could have been resolved easy with her and I relationship, because I don't know Weisha. And it's sad because I come from her family's Sundance Yoshbai. And that's the sad part to it. I have all the respect for her mom, for all her relatives, all her cousins, all her uncles. Those are my family too. I wouldn't want them mad at me. I wouldn't want them mad at me. So I would never address their sister or their cousin like that. I wouldn't, because that's not who I am or how I am. And when someone told me, well, just say when I was with you during the call. And I said, no, I can't, because I was myself. Nobody was with me. Nobody was with me. It was just me. So I can't have someone sit here and lie to you and say, that's what Garf said. 
because there was nobody else. Every statement that was provided on Miss Whiteface's behalf, <coughs> pretty much similar. Statements are similar. They couldn't address some of it. Why? Because the truth of the matter is that it didn't happen. I've been in this circle long enough to know I could be right here, which I am now. So I watch my steps. I do. I know I can't fire any of these individuals myself. I know that. You know that. You know, when I, when I went into to the, to the office to talk, you know, I, all I wanted was to, for everything to stop. My girlfriend is quiet, she's shy, but because of me and the political target I am, Red Cloud School made her resign because she's in a relationship with me. And in their policy, it says you can't be involved in politics. And my, my girlfriend loved those kids so much, she cried when they told her she had to resign or they were going to fire her. And that guy tried to tell her, you put in there for personal reasons. And she said, no, I'm going to say what you said. And that was political reasons. And the very next day, she cried because she lost her job. And then she gets hired at housing, and she was happy to work again. And when that statement was made, it wasn't because of the spaghetti strap. I even told her, I chewed her out. I said, you don't go to work like that. You don't go to work like that. She said, I know. I came to change my shirt. Had nothing to do with the spaghetti strap. What it had to do was, was me was me being attacked again and it being pushed onto her. Not saying it was Jen or Dalbert, just saying that that's how I felt, was that, again, she's going to lose her job because of me. And so I wanted everything to stop. I asked Weisha, just just let it, just don't don't talk to Jen. Don't tell Jen. I just wanted to end. That's how I said it. I didn't scream. I didn't yell. I didn't cuss. And the next morning, the next morning, Weisha's man calls me at 9.37, I believe it was in the morning. He called me three times and I finally called it back. I didn't know whose number it was. And he said, hey, what the F did you say to my woman? And he said, I heard the whole conversation. So I said, well, if you heard the whole conversation, then you know what I said to her. Then he, uh, he said, F that. Where are you at? He said, man up. Man up. man, man up. I said, I am a man. He said, you don't like me. You don't like me. You used to be cool with me and you don't like me. And I said, you know what? I have to distance myself from everyone because of my job. That's what I told him. I wasn't aggressively going at him. And the reason why I left earlier when all that ruckus went on, because I don't want anything else to build on top of what's happening here. So I go out there and I, was, I asked what happened. And because they brought it up, it was brought up in a statement. Her boyfriend showed my brother up here. And then Weisha just started screaming. It's, no one tried to fight her up there. Now I got some of my other relatives out here. Like something's going to happen. Christ, we have CIs and cops sitting out here. When did that ever happen for a tribal council hearing where they're metal detecting all of us? The fact of the matter is that there's a lot of lying going on. A lot. Not by Mrs. Spotted Bear. Not by Mrs. Spotted Bear. But Weishaw's whole statement is a lie. And I'm telling you the truth. I don't have my mom, my eight kids, and my three grandkids to back my statement up. It was just me in the car. All I have is my word and my honesty. I don't want no problems. I didn't want no issues. 
That's all I tried to prevent. So my girlfriend wouldn't have to go through that again. I didn't go in there to threaten Jen. I didn't. I didn't ask Dalbert to fire no one. I never asked John Still to fire anybody. You know, you talk about all these Facebook posts and messages. I'll show you mine. I got a lot of people telling me, stand strong. It's hard to be a man, and it is. It is hard to be a man. In the 80s, as a kid, we used to get beat when they disciplined us. Now, you can't touch a kid because they're intelligent enough to call the cops and you go to jail for child abuse. And that's the same way in this day and age with women. And no disrespect to women, but some women utilize that to attack men. And that's just how I feel. I feel I'm already judged here. And that's a sad thing. And it wasn't just Jen's post about MMIW. There was other people that were posting about MMIW and I had nothing to do with Jen. I have a, a, a community member who lives two houses up from me and her daughter never came home yet. Been missing for two years. And I've been, I've been talking to her. I help her out. She lost two other kids. I know what she's going through. These organizations ain't to be used as a political tool. I'm sorry, but I can't stand up here and cry. I really can't. And try to get your guys' attention and, and your whatnot to, to feel sorry for me. That's why I say it's hard to be a man. I already feel like I'm convicted over a lie. And I'm not saying, once again, Miss Spotted Bear was the liar. I'm saying Miss Whiteface's was, her whole testimony was a lie. And I could tell that they were coached to say this because they couldn't tell anything else from what happened in that conversation. Because I told you the truth. I could tell you again exactly what was said because I know what I said. And I apologize sometimes if I do talk hard. It's just how I talk. You guys all know that. Even in meetings, you some of you guys in here, you cuss too. You know that. It comes out, and I apologize for that. But that shouldn't be enough reason to remove somebody from their job. I love what I do. I love helping and working for our people. I got a lot of people in my district that support me. I got a letter from our executive board supporting me. And I can't take anything back. I apologized in the past to that female that I already went through this whole issue of impeachment with. I apologized to her publicly and I apologized in front of her. I did. But that family still hates me. And that's their right. They're, I'm okay with that. And you know, I'm telling Jen now. And you, you don't have to accept it. But I, I am sorry. I don't know where or how I threatened deal, but I do apologize. I am going to publicly say I did. I did. Maybe I should have approached it differently by just going to her and say, hey, because I did call you sis, and you know that. I called you sis. Now, Charles is one of my little brothers I grew up with. Son answered him for years. But I won't apologize to Mrs. Whiteface because I've done nothing wrong to her. I had a conversation with her, and that was it. Not in a mean way. Not yelling, not cussing. And I'm scared, too. Because every time I get off the council, man, I go to jail. That happened every time I get off the council, I go to jail. For nothing. That's just how administration, it wasn't the tribal council, it was me. That's how big of a target I am. And that's just how I feel standing here. It's like I'm talking to a wall because it don't matter anymore. In the public eye, you guys are going to be the bad guys for voting for a abuser. That's how you're going to be perceived. The council that supports an abuser. And it wasn't even nothing like that. 
All I tried to simply do was prevent it from being here today. Never threatened, never once threatened Jen or her job. I don't have that authority. Never hollered at Mrs. Whiteface. Never, never cussed at her because of the respect I have for her family. Just last week, I, my son stays over in Thunder Valley and I was gonna bring him home because of this situation. That's how bad it's getting. I was gonna take my son home because I don't want him being treated anyway because of me. But my brothers over there told me, no, leave him here. He's a part of us, you're a part of us. They're my family. I wouldn't do that to them. And I'm standing here with the truth. And it's sad to, to have a young girl stand up here and give a false testimony. That was sad to see because that tells me we're only encouraging our young people that lying is okay. You're going to get away with it. That's sad. And I don't, they're questioned to me, how can they help me? Man, I, I'm learning every day. I'm learning every day. Every day I get chewed out for something and I take it in. I learned, I don't cuss, I don't holler at a ref no more because of my last incident. I don't, I'm scared to go to a basketball game. I think I'm the only one in the whole United States to get charged criminally for yelling at a ref. I mean, you guys are probably all guilty of that. But because of that incident, I no longer yell at refs. My, I have a mother. I have five or three daughters. I have two granddaughters. I have one unchie, and I have a lot of aunties. I know how to treat women. I treat them good. I don't even yell at my girlfriend. I'm a good person. Christ, I seen a Facebook post that was sent to me that I was going to shoot four elderly women. Who in the hell would think of something like that? That's how bad this got, just to play politics. To make you guys think I'm the bad guy when really I'm not. Last two weeks ago, I saw in the chat ER in Pine Ridge. He came up and hugged me. He said, "Brother, I'll always love you." And I told him I loved him, and I always love him too. Cause me and the chat been through a lot of hard times together, and I always love him. And I apologized to his companion. If I made her feel any kind of way, I can't take anything back. But my, t my intent was never to have her terminated. If I wanted her fired, why would I, in the past, why would I get her a job? Because I wanted her to have something for her kids. Why would I do that, do that to somebody like that, you know? So I don't know what else to say. All I know is that this has gone too far based off of lies. And as a human being and a man, I have weaknesses and I have faults too. And I let that get a hold of me sometimes. And a lot of the people will send me these snapshots of what they're saying. I'm like, man, I feel guilty in the public eye because I'm quiet. They told me, just stay quiet. And I did. And I felt like that was hurting me more than it was helping me. But as being the traditional Lakota people, we could easily sit here and hug and say, I love you, sister. I'm sorry. And, and anyone with a good heart would accept that. Some people carry a chanupa and claim they sun dance, but will never accept that apology for whatever reasons. But that's a learning experience myself. Do you think I'm ever going to a, go into an office again to resolve anything? No, I'm not. Because I know the consequences. 
like I said, it's a learning process every single day. But until the day I'm dead, I know I'll always be targeted. I'll always be painted as this bad person when I'm not. You guys know that. I work with you daily. So I'll accept whatever you guys decide. If you guys decide you want to listen to lies by Mrs. Whiteface, then I'll accept that. If my sister Jen won't accept my apology, then I accept that. But I have to continue on in life because I got kids and grandkids too. If you guys decide that I can no longer sit in a circle, I have to accept that. My people probably won't because they know I do a lot for them. I do a lot for them. And I know some of you already, you know, you have bad feelings towards me. And I'm okay with that. I'm not trying to change your mind or your vote. Vote how you have to. There's people that sit outside of this circle that want us to fight, want to split this circle. Once again, here we are. We're at it again. But I'll take that on too. I'll, I'll be the one that take the blame for this council splitting. Like I said, my biggest mistake was not going to Jen and just resolving it. I thought resolving it would be calling Miss Whiteface, and that was my biggest regret. Because her testimony was a whole lie. So with that being said, you know, Jen, I really am sorry. You don't have to accept my apology. I'm fine with that. The rest of you, I apologize for putting you in this position, for having to make this decision, because it probably split us the rest of this term when we know our, our people deserve better. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Steele. Please stay at the podium. I gotta sit down, I gotta pad me. Okay. <laughs> um, Miss Whiteface, I'll let you go first if you have any questions for Councilman Steele based on his statement that he just gave. Yes, you can come up to the podium. To bring you all back to the topic of bullying of our Ogallala women. Garth, how many times were you impeached for bullying a woman? I was never impeached in my five terms. Okay. How many complaints came to council for with complaints on you that were for bullying and intimidating women? Probably a hundred. Okay. Was any of them heard? It was probably heard on Facebook, on Keeley, on the news, pretty much in everywhere media can get heard, probably. Did they have any outcome? Well, on one impeachment, um, I wasn't impeached. Um, on the other complaints, they probably weren't accepted because I only went through one trial. So, in that in your terms did you learn anything from any of that yes i did i, I expressed that that i no longer yell at refs do you feel like you're a narcissist you know i honestly guys i went to high school but i didn't go to college so if you could kind of break that word down to me then i'll answer do you feel like it's okay to overtalk women like you are being sarcastic right now and laughing and thinking this is funny? No, I don't. I'm, I'm being truthful. I'm being truthful with these answers. I really am. I I don't I don't know what an, I don't know what that word means. I really don't. And you're a manipulator, you lie, you bully, you intimidate, you talk over women. That's exactly what a narcissist is. You manipulate women to get your way and Ms. men. Miss Whiteface, 
I would just ask that you ask a question. Mm -hmm. I'll keep going. Okay. Thank you. Do you feel that you're above the law? No, I, I definitely know I'm not above the law. I wouldn't be sitting here today. Do you think your actions were okay of what you just went through? Well, I did apologize to Jen because I know I should have approached this whole, but like I stated, you know, with your testimony, I know you're lying. So just I, a simple yes or no. Oh, okay. Well, what was the question again? Do you feel that you're above the law? No. Do you feel like you targeted or intimidated either of us? No, I, I honestly, I didn't. I don't think I targeted you or intimidated anybody. All I wanted was to prevent this from being here today. Do you feel like you're a narcissist? You asked that question already. And I explained it to you. Oh, I'm asking I, yes or no. No, no. You did say you sentenced? Yep. I heard in your testimony, you said that it was, when you first called me, you said that there was a problem between Jennifer and Crystal. No, but I now that you came up here and spoke, you turned it around on me and turned everything around. So who was it? Was it me and Crystal that had a problem or was it Jennifer and Crystal that had a problem? I who never- did, Okay, I'll let you finish. Uh, okay, I never, I never said anybody had a problem. I asked you a question. I didn't say, I didn't tell you someone had a problem. I asked you a question when I called you. Who did you tell first that they had a problem with? Because whenever you called me, you said, Jennifer and Crystal have a problem. I didn't Who's say the that. problem with Crystal? No, no, I already, I'll, I'll tell, I'll, I'm telling the truth. I'll tell you the truth again. And you know the truth. When I called you, I stated that Jen called crystal into a room and asked her if there was going to be any kind of friction with you and crystal because of whatever's going on with me and you and when crystal came and asked me what's going on with you and waisha and i told her i don't know i don't even know waisha i don't talk to waisha and that's why i inboxed you to have you call me did your girlfriend ever accuse you of did your girlfriend ever accuse you of other women i mean what girlfriend hasn't do you think that's why she was mad or intimidated or threatened? I don't know. That's why I asked. I think, that's why I asked. Wait, you. Okay. Wait, wait. Okay, I'll go back. I'm yeah. sorry. I yeah. think we're getting off topic <sighs> here. We need to stick to. Okay. So who was it that had the problem with your girl, your girlfriend, me or Jen? I don't know, and that's why I, I tried to. I tried to ask you what was going on. That's why I asked you what was stated. I don't know. Um, did you not cuss on your recordings to Jen while I speaking did. to Jen? I didn't, I didn't cuss at Jen. It just came out. Like I said, these council reps, they know we cuss sometimes and it came out and it wasn't directed at Jen. Who was it directed at? No, and it just came out. One of my impeachment hearings, they said, I, I believe Jackie said in one of my impeachment hearings that uh, I cuss a lot on Facebook and, so and one person. Okay. So one time in our conversation, did you not cuss at me? No. So no. you spoke to me out of, res out of total respect. Yeah, I did. I never hollered at you and I never yelled at you and I never cussed. Hmm. Do you like discrediting young Lakota women? Can you elaborate on that? Like my daughter. No, I don't. I don't like discrediting them, but I also don't appreciate adults using young people as tools. She wasn't used as a tool. Well, I don't And I want to make that very clear. Wait. Okay. We're not arguing. You can ask a question. He can answer okay, it. One more question. One more question because this is serious because he's discrediting my daughter. I'm not discrediting your daughter. To speak her truth i'm not you are okay, okay so stop stop we're not arguing more. if you have a question you can ask the question okay 
whenever I was giving my testimony, did you not leave the group and go upstairs, stop and stare at my daughter and glare at her? No, I don't, I don't look at <laughs> females in the eyes. I, I'm not that type of person. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Ms. Spotted Bear, do you have any questions? So Garfield, with your, um, you stood here with your feather and said you spoke the truth and stated that you helped me get a job, yeah. um, that I was reaching out for a job. Um, during that time, I was unemployed because it was by choice. Yeah. And I made a post asking if there was any job because I was uh No, I didn't say if there was any job. So you, so you reached out to Nacha. I wasn't posting about being a single mom. You reached out to Nacha and told him to have me get my resume in and that you had a position. So that's how that happened when you said you spoke the truth. Yeah, I, I wait, recall. Wait, okay. do you have a question? So my question is. Um, She's one of my witnesses. Okay. I just want to hear her truth. Okay. on the situation and I hope that you know that'll end the whole uh, situation she is one of my witnesses okay okay you have nothing further Miss Spotted Bear okay um, Councilman Steele do you have any witnesses yeah the first one I want to call is Grace um Gracie Palmer. Okay, and what is she going to testify? She's to? the economic and business development court, um, secretary. Okay, and, and it's referenced in the statement that, as me being a chairman of EBND, that Miss Way shall felt bullied. Okay, all right. Let's get Gracie here. <coughs> Council, is everybody doing okay? I mean, I know that you're all getting up and walking around. Do we just want to keep plowing through? Okay, that's my thought is let's just keep going. Okay. I didn't want to seem like a taskmaster, master, but let's just keep going. Good afternoon. Can Good you afternoon. please state your name? Yes, I'm Pacific Gracie Palmer. Mm -hmm. Okay, Gracie, uh, you are called as a witness by Councilman Steele. Um, the council here wants to know the truth of what is going on. Going on. So we ask you may begin. Okay. Councilman, you can ask her questions or just have her talk. However. Okay, well, the only reason why I brought Gracie in was just to address the part of the the um, statement that uh, um, that as chairman, she felt like her seat on the commission was in jeopardy, I believe. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so my question to you, Gracie, is um like in business development committee. Um, how much meetings has Miss Whiteface sat in our, our uh committee meetings? Sat in person? Sat in person. Uh just April tenth. How about on Zoom? On Zoom there was two of them, I believe. Two of them. Um as a chairman of the committee, do I have a do I have a vote? No. So if anyone individually wanted to terminate someone on the um, election or the marijuana commission, would they be able to just terminate them 
Or how's that process go? I I don't believe so. I think it has to be a majority vote. And does it go to the full council for a vote? I believe so. So I wouldn't have any authority to fire someone myself? No. So she states in here that I've been standoffish during meetings and she feels like she's getting bullied and harassed, but she already clarified in her statement that she felt that way because I, I didn't, I didn't acknowledge her in a meeting. Um, do you feel as a secretary that the meeting we did sit with her at any time, did I ever bully her or harass her? I, I don't, I don't believe so. Okay. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Whiteface, do you have any questions for this witness? Please use that microphone right there. Yep. Um, just to make it clear, clear, the meeting, this wasn't even nothing to even bring her in about, but the meeting that I did felt disrespected was in finance. And I got the meetings next, mixed up. So the meetings, she wasn't even have been there. So it wasn't because I had two EB and D and I met one on finance. So it was on finance. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, Miss Spotted Bear, do you have any questions? Okay. Council, do you have any questions for this witness? Seeing none, <laughs> thank you, Gracie, and Councilman Seely may call your next witness. Okay, the next witness is Crystal, bad one, who's my fiance. Good afternoon. Can you please state your name for the record? My name's Crystal Badwind. Thank you. Councilman Steele, do you have questions? Well, if, if you can, Crystal, um, elaborate a little bit on, on um, you know, the where it all kind of started with um, this conversation with you and Jen. On April 13th, around 9 a.m. or so, Weisha was at the housing building because Jennifer Spotted Bear hired her for the ERAT program for a position in Rapid City. Uh, Weisha was in and out of the building throughout the day, and she was sitting with Miss Spotted Bear in her office throughout the day. Dalbert Brewer, who is the director of the ERAT program, wasn't present that morning. I don't know where he was. Um, it was around like 10 a.m. that she called me into her office and asked there isn't going to be no problems with Weisha because of the situation with Garf. I was dumbfounded because I didn't know of no situation between Weisha and Garf. And, you know, in a gracious manner, I told her, no, there isn't going to be no problems because I don't honestly don't know of any problems. Um, and then I guess that's where she talked about changing my clothing. But then around my lunch time, I went back to Manderson to pick up Garfield because we do share vehicles and I vented to him about what was said. And then I guess later on, he did call Miss Whiteface and ask her about, you know, why Miss Spotted Bear was questioning me the way she did. And Miss Whiteface says she didn't know of any no or like any situation or any problems between her and Garf. 
But in the phone call, she did mention that um, Jen did tell her that when I interviewed, I walked in there and the first thing I said was, I'm Garfield Stills' girlfriend. I never said that, never. I would never use my fiance's merit to gain employment status or financial status. I applied like everyone else. And then on April 14th, after we had our ERAP meeting, I went back to Manderson to pick up Garfield and I vented to him about how I felt targeted at housing by Miss Spotted Bear. Um, I thought he was gonna drop me off and just leave. He didn't, I went back to my desk and I was doing work and I happened to walk by Jen and Dalbert's office and they have like a little window you can see through and you can kind of hear, you know, through, you know, whatever. And I walked by and it's Garfield, John Yellowbird still, Dalbert and Jen in there. And you can tell they were just having a discussion. No one was irate. There was no yelling, no nothing. And that was it. Um, or do we ask questions now? Yes, you can okay. ask questions. Um, can you elaborate just to kind of let the council know, and and where I'm alluding to is, you know, her job. You know, me being a politician. Can you, you know, tell tell them a little bit about your your job status with Red Cloud and it's relevant because it gets into the discussion of um, me being, a, you know, politically attacked. Okay, I'll let it go for a little bit, but it needs to get to the point quickly. Okay, so I was the second grade aide at Red Cloud and my supervisors got a hold of me and through Gchat or whatever you could video call on there and they did tell me they had to let me go because of Garfield's being my um, companion because he was a politician and I couldn't be involved politically. So they asked me to quit basically. So I had it in my resignation. And, and you feel like, you know, working for, for, for your current job that do you feel like because you're my companion that it's kind of going down the same road? Yeah, because I, don't, I like I said, I never told her that I was Garfield Stills' girlfriend when I first walked into that interview. And I don't know why she's talking about my interview with someone else. And I get like passive aggressive, like, you know, towards me with her. Um, I'm supposed to be a supervisor over the intake clerks out in the districts and you know, I'm supposed to be able to order stuff and materials for them. I can't. Uh, that has to go through them. I, I can't do that. I feel like they're taking away kind of my job duties and they're not doing it. Or, you know, they're not allow allowing me to do my job there. Um, in a meeting, they did say I was a supervisor and they did let the intake clerks know I was a supervisor. We had an ERAP meeting on the 22nd and they let everyone know that in that meeting. But just recently on Friday, I had a meeting with Dalbert Brewer. It was me and Alexis, Alexis Goldsberry. She's my coworker. And we asked for a pay rate or a pay change for her because everyone else was getting paid $18.50 and she was getting paid $15, which we thought wasn't fair because she was going Ms. Above, above and beyond her duties. I'm sorry, but we got to get to a point here. I okay. Not so, sure how this relates to what the complaint is. Okay. My point being in that meeting, it was even, you know, anyways, he told me I wasn't a supervisor. So I feel like in a way they are kind of trying to take away, you know, what I'm trying to, my job description and everything. And he told me he was going to go over our job descriptions, change them and the pay rate. So who is your immediate supervisor um in that meeting on the 22nd he said the chain of command went me then jen then him so is jen the immediate supervisor of Waysha also 
I'm confused on that part because Rapid City has its own office and I know Norma up there is the supervisor up there. So I don't know who her immediate supervisor is. I don't know if it's Norma or Jen. But it's not Dalbert? No. Okay, that's all I got. Miss Whiteface, do you have any questions? Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you for taking that over there. Crystal, did I ever meet you prior to my first day of work? Yeah. Um, we, me and Garfield went to Deadwood one time. And I remember seeing Sylvester, Mr. Thomas, and Miss Whitefish there. I was sitting by a chair at one of the doors waiting for Garfield to finish. Well, whenever he was walking over, Sylvester and um, Weisha were walking over. And Sylvester comes up to Garfield and was like, hey, bro, you know, and they were all cool. And then he introduces me to them. So I have met Miss Whiteface at Deadwood. It was, gee, like a couple months ago, a few months ago. And prior to that, or after that, Sylvester did try to add me on Facebook and he was messaging me, but I just went and blocked him because I am with Garfield. Okay. Um, so you said we met. Mm -hmm. Okay, I never met you before besides this. I saw you, but I never met you. I never talked to you. I Ms. never White knew who Face, you were. We're not I arguing. I know. I need a question from you. Okay. You said April 13th. I was, I was in the Pine Ridge office. Yes. And I wasn't. <laughs> I was not in the Pine Ridge office on April 13th. Miss Whiteface, you need to ask questions. Mm -hmm. You're not testifying. Okay. And that's all I have for Crystal. Okay. Ms. Spotted Bear, do you have any questions? Crystal, how was our working relationship when we, you first started? And there wasn't, there's never much said to me at all. Um, I'm supposed to be the intake coordinator and I'm supposed to be involved in like you know, coordinating how things are going there. I'm never talked to, I'm always told how things are gonna go. No one talks to me. Okay, well, I'm sorry you feel that way because that's not right, um, true. And on the incident you're speaking of on the 13th, which you claim that I pulled you into the office and asked you <clears throat> if you had issues with Oisha, um, how how exactly did that happen? Because I don't recall that ever happening. I remember walking to Carrie's office to ask or do whatever with the intake forms and over some applicants and I was walking back and she asked if I could come into her office. So I did. And that was the first thing she asked me is there are there going to be any um, problems with Weisha given the situation with her and Garfield? And then she went into how I was dressed. That is um, negative, but it's in the statement Garfield has. You can read it. Um, I guess I have more statements, but just no more questions. Okay. Anyone have any questions for this witness? Thank you, Ms. Badwound. Yeah, thank you. Any further witnesses, Councilman Steele? Um, that's all I got. Okay. Uh, you may, uh, I guess, Council, do you have any questions for Councilman Steele? Councilman Rodriguez. <clears throat> start with the statement, then I'll start with my questions. The, uh, um, <clears throat> I've caught a lot of grief for you posting that, you know, I voted yes to hear this complaint and uh, that's fine and dandy. Um, really doesn't bother me because we're here to both see both sides and be equal to everyone, regardless of our position and where we sit. Everybody has a right to complain and they have a right to be heard. 
the, the complaints that we didn't hear had no merit. Um, so we didn't hear them and we based it on that. So, I mean, with that, I've, I've heard, I've had to hear both sides this for 26 years to be fair to everybody. And you know that you have been a cop for a few years and, and you know that you got to hear both sides of the story. So that's why it's here. Got a lot of law enforcement on this panel. That's why we're hearing this. So that's just for everybody out there that know where my, what my position is. And I'm not taking sides or anybody's side, but everybody has a right to be heard. Um, I don't think it was your place to prevent anything. If she had a problem, she should have took it to her supervisor and you should have encouraged her to take it to her supervisor and stayed out of that building. You had no business in there in the first place, regardless. My question is, why did you even call Wisha? If you listen to my my statement, I told you I called Wisha because I didn't want it going any further than it already has. I tried to prevent this from happening. I really didn't want this happening. And that's why I tried to just put that fire out there. But me, I can't prevent people from lying. I really can't. So whatever goes beyond that, that's not on me. But to be truthful, I did. It had nothing to do with threatening anyone's job. Really didn't. It was trying to stop anything from going further because I didn't want no more problems. I don't want problems for myself and I don't want problems for my companion because I go through enough and that's all I tried to do. The moment you walked in that building, that's what created the problems. Why are you trying to put them out? You just, you the intent of you walking in there to handle and put out the fires, but like it said before here, you're a councilman 24 seven. Who don't know your own council, Gar? Who don't know that you carry that weight when you walk in somewhere and where you're at? That's what I'm saying. If you wanted to prevent this, you should let her handle it and internally and let the program do its job and work the process. There's a process for everything and it should have been handled that way. When you try to avert that and go around and reroute things, that's where the problems start. And that's where we are now today. And that's all I've heard here today. Spaghetti straps and rumors. And we're here for hours for today to hear that. That's all this is based on. Spaghetti straps and he said, she said. Follow the dress code. Okay, that was the beginning. That was the end. That's in Dalbert's statement. Everything that we've read. That's all this is based on. Because she was told to put on a different clo a different shirt. And then it erupted into all this other stuff because you went into the building instead of letting the process handle itself. You should have just told her, hey, take it to her supervisor and file a complaint that way. Let it happen internally. As soon as you walked in that building, knowing who you are and what you do, intimidation, just walking in who don't know who we are. Especially you, Garf. You say you're always a target, but you walked in that building, you made yourself a target. And I mean, you're my bro, we go way back. I got nothing against you. I got nothing here. I wanted to hear both sides of the story and thank you for letting me hear both sides of the story and everybody's statement and what they had to say. But I've been sitting here for four hours to hear a complaint based on spaghetti straps and put a different shirt on. That's the only reason why we're here because you walked in that building to put out a fire that wasn't even a fire yet that could have been handled internally in that whole process of that whole building by itself without your help. That's how it should have been handled. Instead, we spend half our day here listening to this. He said, she said, they said, we said, and a recording. I'm not taking nothing from nobody. I'm not saying nothing about nothing, but that's all we heard here today. And honestly, Rob, that's it. We're, we're in positions of, of where we are in there and who don't know where we are and what we do. So my question is, why? You know, my, my whole involvement had nothing to do with taking up for our, uh, you're making it sound like it, it, my whole 
thing with this was to prevent anything else, any kind of actions from result from from happening. It was to put the fire out, and that's what it was when I f- very first called. But in the real world, maybe that maybe that process does happen, but around here it really don't. It really don't. There is politics being played. Every situation we look at, there's pol- there's politics being played. You know that. You've been a cop before. You see the politics in that. I know how ugly it could get, and it is ugly right now. That's what I didn't want happening. Well, unfortunately, it happened. And going into housing, it was going to to talk to people that I do trust. I did trust Miss Spotted Bear because I did call her sister as I do female com- people that I, I, I female relatives that I, I, I hold close. Like I said, her, her, her husband is one of my little bros. So I, going in there, it was to talk to people I trust to just stop this, but it, it blew up. Unfortunately it blew up. And I think a lot of the outside sources have something to do with it, something we can't stop. So it did get out of hand. Man, this is like some high school stuff going on here. It really is. And here we are, tribal leaders fighting over. You know, and it, it's crazy, but like it is what it is. I apologize if if I if I went into a building, which I know some of you probably go to a building and talk to people thinking you're going to resolve something and then it becomes the political bully and then it turned into a a man over a female thing which it never was and it's hard for us as male to address people it really is hard for us to address people because then we become a monster so maitland like i stated maybe i should have did it wrong uh different where it wouldn't have been this big old mess because the lies are what took it here. The lies is what got us here. This little incident that happened up here, that was lies too. It's not that bad, but lies are making it bad. Councilman Yellowboy, did you have a question? You know, we sat here and listened back and forth and like Councilman Rodriguez, it came down to it should have been handled internally. Unfortunately, it did not. And uh, so so my question is, you know, Garf, in all your years as being a council representative <clears throat> from the Wunitni District, And I've known these individual from being a, a, as in all your years of being as a council representative, do you consider yourself a bully? No, I don't. I really don't. A lot of times I stand, I, I speak strong because that's what I was taught to do. Not to in- intimidate or bully people, but I was always taught to stand with a strong voice. I have a lot of people in my district that support me and stand with me because of who I am. And I'm not going to change. Like I said, there's days that I learn things. Like I stated, I probably would never go into a building again, not even for a meeting, too scared. So I do, I, I, I learn, but I'm, I don't consider myself a bully. I, I don't look a female in the eye, like I said, because that alone is intimidation. But sitting here in a circle, we debate, right? That's our job. You guys take out a petition as a female to sit in a circle, you know we're going to debate, things get heated up. How many times did Ala John and myself go back and forth, or Sonia and myself, or Jackie and myself, or Cora, you know? It's our job. But I'm not trying to bully you. 
or intimidate you, you have every right to vote the way you want. So I don't consider myself a bully. Thank you. Councilman Rodriguez, do you have another question? Yeah, I understand everything you said, Garf, and, and I, I'm agreeing with you about about that and what we do here in the circle and when we have our, our time to do that, but that's when we're supposed to do that. I mean, like like you said, of all the years you, you've been on, I mean, and including this, this term for the short time we've been here and it's been fast and quick. We've done a lot in the short time we've been here and a lot of people don't know what we do, but we've done a lot for this tribe up to this point. And I just, I wanna know if if you learned from this, because you say you walk around with a target on your back and, and you have to look around and ask yourself why. And yeah, you have a strong voice and that's really appreciated and, and a good thing for our, for our community and our district. And, and I appreciate that above most because I mean, I've, as a cop for, for a long time, 26 years, I know that if I speak up and have a strong voice and stuff, people want to complain about it. So, you know, I appreciate that. And yeah, I don't, I'm not always out there with you doing everything, but you know, I'm out there. And my question is, is have you learned? I mean, there's a process to everything. And yeah, in the real world, you know, the process may have worked and this is the res and all this and all that. And I understand all that. Don't get me wrong. But if you don't have faith in the process, who's going to have it? We developed those processes to be followed. That means we all have to follow the process. So have you learned anything? You know, I sit around and I look at all of you and around this table, and I'm pretty sure every single one of you at one time or another went into an office to talk to people about problems. Unfortunately, I'm the one to have a complaint filed on me, which always happens. And like I stated twice now, I did learn from that. And like I said, I probably won't go into another building for the rest of this term. I'll probably be like some of these council reps and just stay on Zoom. Or if you remove me, then the problem's gone. But that's up to you guys. But I learn things every day. I'm not this monster that's painted. I really ain't. People know I'm a good person. Some people don't agree with me, so they use this as a tool. Just like every single one of you, you got people after you. Councilman Puryear, did you have a question? I don't have a question, but can we move on um, to get to whatever we're gonna do next? I mean, um, some of these questions have already been answered. Um, I got some things to say, but it doesn't have to be wasting up a hearing time. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Anybody else have specific questions related to the complaint? Councilwoman Sears. Yes, um, you know, I know there's witnesses lying but how do we know, you know, both sides, he could be lying, she could be lying, you know, we don't know that. But it's just that the the position we're in as council reps, you know, we are 24 seven, we're, you know, should watch what we do. But I have a couple questions. I had three questions, but uh, Mr. Rodriguez did ask one of them. Um, this, the, the question I have is, you said on the recording that you don't want to have to get involved, you know? So what did you mean by that? You know, I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't hear that part. Yeah, I heard But when I said I don't want to get involved is I don't want to be a part of anything. You know, I don't want to be. And when they brought my name into it by saying, is Weisha going to have a problem with Garf? Don't involve my name. Don't involve my name, then I'm not even, I'm non-existent. That's, that's basically, basically what I mean is I don't want to be involved in anything like that. Okay. And, you know, politics is being played, you said, you know, and, and I agree. You know, you said it. 
you said that you um, lobbied council to hire this um, Jennifer Spotted mm -hmm. Bear um, for the secretary of the tribe. So you as a council too, you know, things do get political. Can you also lobby council to fire anyone? You know, those things happen politically. So what do you think about that? Well, you're talking about, are we firing employees? Or who are we firing? I mean, you, you got to be more direct in your question. I think the ladies that spoke felt like politically they can get, you know, lose their jobs. So I think that's where they were coming from is how I understood. So that's why I was just asking you that question. Can you as a council rep also lobby council to fire someone? Well, as a seasoned council rep yourself, and uh, sitting here five terms, I know individually we can't fire people within a program. We can't. I know that. Yeah. That's on the director to fire people. And for myself, like I stated, I never had in any intent or intentions of having anyone fired. I was trying to prevent something bigger happening. And like I said, it just blew up. So it, there was no intentions of having anyone fired that was never ever a thought it was never a question and it never came out of my mouth i think that's all i got thank you any other questions yes councilman hawkins yes thank you council chair i had a question on uh as being new to the political arena in our job description, does it tell us to enter any building and say such things as we're talking about today? Does that job description tell us to do that? And one more thing, I'd like to have a definition of from Mr. Steele, if he has a definition for a whistleblower. Um, I'd like to see a job description. I don't think we ever had a job description on the council. I mean, as far as I know, the constitution kind of lays out our authority, but I have never seen a job description. Um, as far as a whistleblower, I thought that had to do something with, uh, like, um, something illegal, uh, you know, employee seeing something illegal in a, a, a business and they, they come out and they write statements on it and, you know, they're protected by a certain act. I, I don't know. I mean, never used the term, never had to. So I, I don't know. Thank you. Any other questions before we end this hearing? Yes, Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston. Thank you. You know, you know, we've listened to both sides, I guess, and that's what I would have I wanted to hear. You know, we came into this administration as one. And we know that this administration, every administration, there's always going to be a complaint filed against you. Whether you agree or disagree with someone out there, a complaint will be filed against you. I know that because it happened to me. And I wanna say that um, if we learned anything out of this situation that we've been listening to all day is that we need to stay the heck off of Facebook. Social media plays a big part of what is being said today. I want the people to know that I don't have Facebook you never see Sonia Little Hawk Weston on the Facebook because that's where all the problems start. Yeah. Yeah. 
since the beginning of this complaint that was accepted, I've been getting phone calls, I've been getting text messages, and they said, well, you know, you're senior, your senior councilwoman. You need to listen to these things on Facebook. You need to listen to these text messages. And I said, you know, I'm not gonna listen to anything. I'm not gonna listen to anything that you wanna tell me that's been posted on Facebook. And I hate to say this today, but it happened on both sides. Both sides were on Facebook. So if there's anything that we learned as tribal council leaders, and we put, say it every two years, because even council can't just blame Mr. Steele, but there's other council in this circle that get on Facebook. After they say things, Council did this, council said that, and next thing you know, we got people accept, oh yes, we support you. We support what you said. And they call me and they say, did you hear what that councilwoman said or that councilman said? So if there's anything we learned today as tribal council is social media. Because today social media was already out there. It already heard the case and already told us how to vote. They told us, you need to do this, you need to do that. <clears throat> so today, as tribal council, read the constitution because that's what tells you what we as tribal council leaders be. And I've always been an advocate for my district. Not only my district, but the Oglala Sioux tribe, and I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna always be a voice and an advocate. And that's what I'm gonna always be. And it might get me in trouble because people are not gonna like what I do or say. But that's how I'm gonna live my life. So today, if we learned anything from all of this, is that we need to learn to stay off of social media. And then we say, well, I got freedom of speech. I can say whatever I want to say, because that comes back to us too. So we cannot sit here and say, well, you need to not do this because we all have a right. We all have a right to voice our opinions. We all have a right to do what our district wants us to do, our people. Yes, I've listened. I listen, I, I always listen. But I want to say today that this hearing never was a fair hearing. It never started out to be because social media already was out there and already told us what to do. You know, I got phone calls from constituents and said, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I'm glad they're listening today. I, I hope they're listening. A woman that wants to hear both sides of everything. And I, I wanna say today that people judge us for how they see us as tribal leaders thank you for standing up and being strong I might not have the support of some of the people but today I want to say that as tribal leaders and I've always said it our job is hard our job is hard because we represent a district that put us in office but we need to remember that we represent not only the district, but the Wallace Sioux tribe. So I, I wanna say that, um, and I thank the two ladies that came forward to bring this complaint. I uh, say that sometimes those things are hard, but I think that I'm like uh, Mr. Carlo, 
I think this should have been done and handled internally. You know, being a former administrator, a former director, twice. I ran an office with 33 employees under myself. So I know what it takes to manage a program. And today I sit here and I'm listening to everything that's being said and I say, this should have been handled internally, administratively. What happened? Where's Mr. Steele today? Where's Mr. Brewer? They should have been standing there at that podium. They should have been part of the testimony, sitting back at the housing office. And as tribal council, we as tribal council take action sometimes, but we take it, whether we vote yes or no to it, it still comes out as a council action. I don't care what you say. You say, oh, I voted no on that. No. It was a council action, and that's how we see it. I've learned those things being on this council since 2006. But I don't see Mr. Steele here, and I don't see Mr. Brewer here. And I think that those need to be addressed. And I think as tribal council, we can't say, well, Mr. Still, you should have never went into the housing office. You should have never done that. But there's going to be times where I'm going to go into housing office and I'm going to request a meeting and I'm going to ask some questions because my district members want me to ask certain things. Is that going to prevent me from doing business for my district? As a legislator, I'm not going to stop that. I will not fear that. So today as council, we need to think about that. When our council, our, our district members say, you know, housing is doing this, housing is doing that. Could you go find out what's going on here? I'm going to go over there and I'm going to ask. That should not stop me from doing that as a legislator. So I think that it's come to a point now where, you know, it's it's going to happen every two years. And I think some of us council leaders have been through it. We've seen it. It's happened to us. But that's not going to stop me from being a, a tribal leader, a strong tribal leader, strong tribal. I could always say that, and I'm going to say it, Lakota woman. Mom, you always get yourself in trouble, my daughter say. But because I stand up strongly for what I believe too and what I see. So I want to let council know today that we have a hard job to do. We're going to have to go into executive session. We're going to have to discuss these issues with the new ones that are on board here. And we're going to have to make some decisions based on the code of ethics. But I want to say that today, that social media already told us what to do. And told us how it's not going to satisfy each other, each side. So today, when we discuss this issue and we have to make a hard decision, then that's issue, that, that decision should be based on the things that were written in this law, Code of Ethics. So I wanna say that it's a tough job that we have to do, Your Honor, we gotta do that as tribal leaders, but I wanted to share that today because that's exactly what I've seen is and been hearing and they're saying, you know, do this, do that. And it's on both sides. So we need to, we need to um, think about that. But with that, I want to say thank you and um, hope that we can get wrap this uh, hearing up. I think that we've uh, heard, I think both sides of it, but I really believe that it should have been handled at the housing office. And we wouldn't have had to with it today and the people that should have been here are not here 
I think that's something that, um, you know, when you put administrators in office, that uh, they are paid to take care of these issues. And if they can't do that, then that kind of concerns me. So, you know, I just want to say today that we need to, we need to uh, think about those things. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston for your wisdom. Um, there is a question from uh, Councilman Jumping Eagle. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, I sat here today um, listening to both the two ladies and listening to Garfield, you know, all their witnesses. You know, we sit here and, and I was one who, who voted to accept the complaint last week. You know, because there's two sides to every story. You know, all we heard was one side last week. So we accept the complaint. Now we hear both sides of the story. I mean, that's the way it should be. You know, we couldn't make a decision on hearing one side. Now hearing both sides, we can make the best decision. You know, uh, I could go on and on and on, but Sonia took up most of my time, so... I'm going to try to keep it short, but, you know, we're putting these positions and they're tough positions we're putting. You know, I went through this. Some of us went through this last administration impeachment and after impeachment, you know, and it, it, it it's tough. It's a tough job, but it's decisions that fall on us. And we have to remember that, you know, none of us put ourselves in this position but we have to be the judge. We have to be the jury, you know? So, I mean, I just encourage us all to, to really look at, at both sides and, and let's make the best decision, you know, that that's why we accepted the complaint so we can, and, and it's here in front of us today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, if there's no other direct questions, for Councilman Steele. I think we proceed forward. Um, I appreciate the council's comments. Um, we can talk more in executive session about everybody's feelings and the outlook and how we need to proceed forward. I am going to allow Councilman Steele to briefly close um, and then we'll proceed forward. Okay, um, at this time, I just want to, you know, tell the council, you know, uh, you know, you know, it is a hard decision. And, you know, I, like I said before, you know, I apologize for putting, putting all of us in this position. But like I said, you know, lies and rumors really got it where it should be today. And um, you heard, and this is my close you heard statements from um, Mrs. Whiteface witnesses and herself, pretty much the same when I questioned them. They, they, uh, they couldn't tell us their own account of what transpired on the phone. Pretty much tells you that it was coached. And just whatever was on paper was their facts. And I wanted to to stay, ask for someone to be terminated. Why well, was just chairman and ask him what I should do? Because I did take advice from him. And he's the one that said, go talk with Dalbert and Jen. So I did take Mr. Jumpin' Eagle's advice. But like I said, it wasn't to... terminate, harass, intimidate, bully. That's what I wanted to to be clear that I wasn't there to bully. So I just wanted to close by that much and you know whatever happens, I guess you know that's within your power and you know gotta respect the decision the circle makes. But I got a lot of people back home that I know do Respect me, support me, love me, and and that's all I, it matters to me. 
you know, there's people outside of my district that don't like me. That's fine with me. You know, I can never change people's minds or hearts. They have their own opinions. But them influencing the circle, it only it only creates a mess for our people where we'll never move ahead. You know, we had high hopes, this administration. And, you know, Mr. Jumping always says it. We are like the last admin. Look at here we are doing the same thing that happened. So I just want to say that much and thank you guys for your time and allowing me to give my side the truth that I believe that I'll walk with. And it's up to you to take that or not. Like Jackie said, how do we know he's telling the truth or they are? You'll never know because you guys weren't on the phone. Only myself and I know only Weishaw is present. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Steele. So with that, we um, the hearing will be closed. We have heard from both complainants. They've had an opportunity to present evidence, present testimony, we have, um, they've been subject to cross-examination. We have also heard from Councilman Steele, who was allowed to present evidence, cross-examine the witness, the witnesses. Um, everybody has made statements and had an opportunity to question the complainants as well as Councilman Steele. So as I said in the beginning, um, the council is operating under ordinance 20-74, um, which is the Comprehensive Code of Ethics and Removal Procedures. The council specifically will be operating under Section 8 or Chapter 8, which details the Tribal Council hearings and, section, and sanctions. Um, <clears throat> when going into executive session, the council will have to determine um, how they want to proceed. Section 8-6 details the council's options at this time. And the council can dismiss the complaint if it determines by a majority vote that the complaint is subject to dismissal for one or more of the reasons set forth in section 6-2B of this code which details what is required to be in a complaint. The, the council can sanction Councilman Steele and to approve, the sanctions can involve either a public reprimand, a suspension from office with or without pay, removal from office or any other sanction the council deems just and appropriate. Any sanction has to be by a two thirds majority vote. And what that means by that language is that it's two thirds of the council voting. So vote or abstain from voting, you are not counted in that two thirds majority or two thirds that are voting. The language of the code says two thirds vote. In other parts of um, specifically in the law and order code, it says two thirds of those present and voting. And in this code, it says two thirds vote. So what we're going to operate under is that if you are voting, you're counted within that vote and you have to have a two thirds majority of whoever's voting. I'm kind of talking in circles, but if you have questions, we can talk about that. Um, so for example, if we have 18 votes, 18 people vote, two thirds of that would be 12. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, if you abstain, if you say I'm abstaining from voting, that's essentially not voting. If you say I'm not voting or just don't respond, that's a not vote and you don't get counted in that pot. 
Um, when imposing these sanctions, the council is to consider all relevant circumstances, including the severity of the act or acts committed by the respondent or any prior offenses committed by the respondent, which is Councilman Steele. Um, again, your decision is final. It's not subject to review by or appeal to the tribal courts or any other court, tribunal, or forum. And your decision is open to the public unless you decide by majority vote to seal this decision. So with that, I believe we can go into executive session. Oh, do we need a... We need a vote. Oh, we need a vote to go into executive dissent. Okay, I have a motion by Councilman Carlo and a second by Councilman Knoyer. Never. <laughs> you are here for the night. <laughs> Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Yeah. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Cora. Ryan Jumping Eagle, Sr. Yes. Gerald Knoyer, Jr. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. Ron Dubray? No. Oh. James Cross? Yes. Ella John Carlo? Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. David Puyer? Yes. Sonia Littlehawk Weston? Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears? Yeah. Michael Carlo Sr. Yes. Bernardo Rodriguez Jr. Yes. Craig Dillon. Yes. Seventeen yes, one no. Stacy, I have a question. Stacy. Can, Ryan can has a someone, question. Stacy, can you email me real quick a copy of the ethics code of what we're going off of? Do you have it handy? Um, I did email it to you before the um, hearing, Ryan. So okay. check your email. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 